Well, welcome, welcome, guys. Hopefully everything's all running well. Uh, how are we all doing today is uh, the next big release of Living World Season 1. So weird to say that still to me. Uh, as it has returned now um, throughout 2022. So this is the second of five episodes, I think is what they said. Uh, if you saw the previous part of the playlist, we played through Flame and Frost. Uh, and I'm really it's interested to see what they do on this patch. So that is what this uh, video today is going to be. Uh, we'll be running on through. Um, I do want to say as well, hold on, let's mute the dialogue, as we always do. I Obviously, I want the dialogue on when we get into the story in a second. Um, I do want to say as well, there's been barely any videos lately. Uh, if you're watching this way off in the future through the playlist, that might not be apparent to you guys. But Jesus, there's been like nothing going on. I do apologize about that to everyone. I'm, I'm basically saying this here at the start of the video in anticipation of people seeing there's some activity on the channel. And then they see that, you know... That they'll be listening to this at the start. Uh, I do want to explain and talk about some of that stuff. None of my plans have changed or anything like that. Uh, so, yeah, I did just want to say that clearly, yeah, and um, hopefully I'll talk about that a bit more going forwards. But, yeah, I wanted to say at the start so that we're not bagged down throughout the whole story playthrough here. Um, so, yeah, we'll see what they've got now. I'm really curious on this one. I think it was pretty much confirmed somewhere. I can't remember. Somewhere a couple of weeks ago, I had this impression. That the South Sun stuff now, some of the people in the live chat might want to just clarify this to me. But I'm pretty sure the South Sun stuff isn't going to be here, right? So when we started at Flame and Frost, they had actually skipped several beats. And I think that um, that means that there are going to be like some soft retcons coming up. Like how exactly a Kanark is introduced to the story and so on. Um... I'm still really interested in how they'll do this whole thing over just five parts because season one was a massive number of releases. Uh, so this is called Sky Pirates. The question is, where does it end? Uh, so last week there was a blog post that they threw up that said, hey, Sky Pirates is coming next week. Have fun with it. But they didn't really uh, give much of a suggestion as to how far it will go. I'm really interested in the uh, concept art and the background for it, though. That's not the Tower of Nightmares, is it? I don't think it is. I actually, that is completely unfamiliar concept art to me though. That doesn't look very sky piratey back there, does it? So I don't know. Anyway, they say in Lion's Arch, a festival is announced to celebrate the dragon's defeat. The commander arrives for the opening ceremony, but is soon plunged into a darker investigation. So my guess is here that we're going to meet Marjorie for the first time. We're going to meet... Um, so Kazmir is interesting as well because... In theory, we should have seen Kazmir at South Sun already, but we haven't been there, so... I don't know, this will be really weird. And also, uh, I, w I won't log on to it, but somewhere else on my account, um, I have a bunch of old items from Living World Season 1, and I th I'm pretty sure I have an item that you can double-click it to replay this cool, like, film noir, dark, kind of creepy Marjorie cutscene um, in the Dead End Bar, and that might actually play here on this episode, which will be really interesting too. So, uh, let's turn dialogue back on now, and when I accept this, we might get a mail with what dialogue straight away, we'll see, oh well, okay. So That's... much history in the making. Indeed, indeed, Priory people, in fact, we're about to watch some history in the making here. So, play this episode. Let's see, will they speak to us? Re read them a se Oh, and this should start with E as well. I think that this is a nice little reminder to E for us, because after End of Dragons, it kind of feels like they might do something with E again. Um, so, is this it? Yeah, here it is. This is the intro to E. Oh my god, wouldn't it be mind-blowing if there was voice acting here now? <laughs> you know, because back during Season 1, they didn't really voice act the males, if I remember rightly. I don't think they did. But now that they're re-implementing it, it would be so cool to think of the idea that maybe we would suddenly hear E's voice, even though we never had before. I, I get it, it would be a little bit unfitting, but hey, whatever. Okay, so E, Council Threat, Lis. I wonder if this is the exact same text as we got all those years ago, or they've changed it a bit. They probably changed it a bit, as I remember from episode one. Uh, you may not know me, but I know you. I'm calling upon you because you're capable in the face of danger. If you consider yourself a force for good in this world, then I implore you to attend the Dragon Bash Effigy Ceremony in Lion's Arch. I've heard whispers about a threat to the ship's council and, if left unchecked, to the city itself. I'd intervene myself, but circumstances prevent it. I'd wish you luck, but luck is what fools and idiots require to stay alive. You, I believe, are neither. Um, and I will surely contact you uh, again, E. Man, this is really crazy. The Captain's Council, I'm just trying to think for like a totally new player, someone who's r running through all of this in sequence, how familiar they're going to be with the, c the c Council. I think there's, there's a part of me that 
instinctively wants to say, oh, back in the day we were all really familiar, but I don't know whether everyone will have that. Because even in the personal story, they don't do that much with the Captain's Council. I think if you play Whispers, obviously you get a bit more. Because the Order of Whispers base in old LA was literally built into the back of the Captain's Council ship. Um, and they, they have like a, a little bit to do. But okay, so anyway, um, he'll, he'll contact us again. He or she, I guess. Uh, we'll contact us again. This is E, and this is kind of E's introduction. I am convinced that Living World Season... F Wait, what, what's the number? Five? Six? Where are we? Yeah, uh, well, six, because the Ice Brood Saga. Um, I'm sure eventually they'll rename this to just say Season 5, the Ice Brood Saga. Anyway, uh, I'm sure that when we get to Season 6, E's back. I mean, it's got a, it's, he's got to come back with the whole detective agency thing. Anyway, so this is kind of actually quite well-timed here in, in the middle of 2022. Um, so, let, uh, oh, I accidentally clicked out of the scene there, sorry, <laughs> for a second there. Um, that was, that took a very, very precise click of my mouse uh, to have that happen, but there you go. Uh, so yeah, let's uh, go on over and see what they do. I, oh, wait, 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 hold on, we're not even starting in LA? Are we starting outside LA so that when we enter, it sort of feels like a smooth transition or something like that, maybe? I guess. I'm going to be interested to see how they do some of the other features as well, because this uh, this era of Living World Season 1, we already saw a little bit of this on the previous um, part. Oh, look at all these players. The pat For anyone watching this in the future, the patch just landed, so, I mean, it's going to be busy. Hey, look, there's another person called Liz here. This is Liz Varn. Liz Varn meets Liz. It's quite interesting. You know, it's actually funny. I don't have Liz with two S's. Yeah, I, I think on another game I have lists with two S's, um, but I took just lists with one S, uh, three letter names obviously, much more prestigious. Uh, right, yeah, I don't know how they're going to do this because, um, as we already saw a little bit in the previous part, a lot of this era of Living World Season 1 was the open world stuff and like the side achievements and things. I think they were really elegant about it in the previous release, um, but there's suddenly a lot more of it now. I mean, it depends on how far they go, so... We'll see. I want to be. I want to clarify for people as well. Um, there's been barely any videos over this month. I haven't even played Guild Wars. Like I, I have not been around. I haven't turned the game. Basically, that previous. If you're watching this playlist and sequence, it's not like I've had you know a couple of weeks here of you know playing around in End of Dragons and getting various masteries and stuff. I still haven't finished my Siege Turtle. If you look here, I, I have not played the game. I haven't done any of the side stuff. I haven't touched it. So. Um, in fact, I logged in today and I had a bunch of daily gathering login rewards because I did like I did log in on a couple of days just to try and get some laurels because obviously for anyone that doesn't know, I've got a bit of a project with my bank at the moment where I'm try First of all, I'm trying to get to 10,000 instant level ups eventually because I want to do a tweet where it says I've got 10,000 free levels. <laughs> um, but that's a bit away still. Uh but down here in my bank, I'm trying to get all the ascended items, like literally all of them. But what I'm currently in the process of is a ton of laurels I need. I need laurels for the three versions. There's like three editions of every stat type of every amulet. So I'm kind of like just slowly building these out. Basically, all these gaps here, all these holes need to be... Each is a, a 30, 30 laurel or 25 laurel one of us is what I think it is. Gap. So get login rule. Even when I'm not playing the game... Logging in to get a login reward every now and then is super useful. Um, but yeah, okay, all right. None of that's about season one necessarily. Okay, so wait, wait, wait. we're in Lion's Arch. It's old Lion's Arch. It's old Lion's Arch with post-processing on, but no sepia tone or filter, which is good. It's unfortunately got a narrow boundary. I would love it if they just gave us free hog, free run, run, run of the whole place. They could, in theory, do that because since Path of the Fire, they can move these boundaries mid-mission. So you never know; they might just turn it off. That would be really cool. Um, but also, it's it's Dragon Bash decorations around. So the the dragon pinatas, which I barely, you know, I could not tell you right here what all the different decorations were that they did. My memory is that they only decorated a tiny bit of the town. My memory also, for what it's worth, is that it was perpetually at night time. So seeing this in the day is, is especially weird. Okay, also the central the central statue is 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 this Asuran machine here. It actually looks just like those hologram things that you can get for the guild hall now, doesn't it? Was that always true? Um Now I think what this is is because there was a bit of continuity going on 
with Old Lion's Arch, where M Mad King Thorn had destroyed... If, if you guys remember in the personal story when you're here, it's that beautiful statue, and the idea is that all the different races have contributed to his design. So there's, like, the clockwork ship sailing around, and then there's... Um, you know, the, the char steel or whatever it is, and the, the Norn had built, I can't remember. And it, uh, and it had written a new cry in around the base of it, like, together we thrive, or, or something to that effect. Anyway, I think the idea is that Mad King Thorn broke it in the final phase of that first Halloween. And they've rebuilt it now? Is that the, is that the story? Or am I getting that all confused with Lighthouse stuff? Because the Lighthouse was another thing that got destroyed around now because of the Karka attack. Which I don't know, is that canon anymore? Has the Kark have the Karka attacked Lion's Arch? Okay, this is definitely where like the festival ended, right? It's so weird seeing this in the day. My my memory was just always at night. Oh that's interesting. These are supply carts, are they? I was wondering why I could walk through it, I guess because they can move. Alright, well. I'm trying to scan as well, see if, to the spirits of the wild, but they rarely answer. see if there's anyone I can actually specifically speak to or, or, or you know, press F on, get a little bit of extra dialogue. Captains and oh. crews and visitors too, welcome to the first annual Dragon Bash. Is everyone having a good time? <laughs> it's time to light the effigies and turn this Dragon Bash into a dragon burn! But first, let me introduce the other ship's council members who are joining us today. Who is this Please supposed to be speaking? Magnus. Oh, okay. Please give the finest captain on the council, Captain Anne Reed. And when I say fine, I do mean fine. Captain Bonnie Anne Next Reed. Next on the docket is the captain of the Sprocket, Captain Talk. One of the most impressive Asura ever to sail the seas. If you like my sprocket, Magnus, you should see my new rocket. <laughs> Whatever. And last <laughs> but not least, it's Captain Theo Ashford of the Oscalonian Ashfords. A more effective family of cutthroats never lived. Ah, oh, you're too kind, Magnus. I'll have to work extra hard to live up to your praise. <laughs> You'd better, you salty old dog. So, Theo is the main the one. The council will also like to welcome the cultural representatives joining us today. They're all secretly wondering if we brought them up here to sacrifice them. <laughs> no, of course we didn't. Let's give our brave visitors a hand. <laughs> That's quite an ominous line, knowing what's going to happen. Who were killed by dragons. All hands on deck. Toss your memorials on the pyre. Let's light the horizon with this dastardly dragon. Begin the burning! This is completely unfamiliar to me. Well, not completely. What's that phrase? Like a dream half remembered or whatever? Like, it's so vaguely That's reminiscent. Right. Toss your memorials right on the effigy. Everybody, let's remember all those we've had taken from us. Of course, you can do Nicely this in the done, modern friends. Dragon Bash. Nicely done. All right, light them up. You can burn these up. in in Holbrack when the actual festival comes back. Light up. Oh. There we go. Wow, like a bunch of them get get hit. Take home. The Lion Guard are here. You there. Get to the counselors and protect them. You get up to the stage and form a perimeter around the counselors. Lion Guard, go get that Joliak and bring it to the front. We have injured, and we need to get the counselors to safety. Okay. Who needs assistance? See if you can help the char cultural rep. He's injured and not moving. I'll do what I can. Oh, who's Taylor the citizen, everyone. guys? That may have just been the prelude. Oh, no. Some are seriously injured. Where's that Dolyak? You, 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 and uh, oh, mists. All of you, go with that Dolyak. Make sure the injured counselors get to the fort. So is the idea this... Oh, I kind of look at the lightning effigy and I think, oh, that's just a fancy magic effigy that's a little bit different, you know. But no, no, no. I guess that's the idea. It's been sabotaged and that's why it zaps through. I, I didn't remember that it hit all the... I, I always thought of this as like a very calculated assassination of a specific counselor. But a lot of people get hit here. Nobody talks about this guy. Garrett Ambercow just got destroyed here. I assume it's totally down and out for the count now. 
And the other two guys here as well. It wasn't just Theo. Also, yeah, that's... Uh, so, this, this is probably a really cool thing to play for, like, new people in uh, End of Dragons. Because this exact moment will be referenced by my chin later. Well, actually, more referenced by Marjorie. My chin's, like, forgotten about it, hasn't she? It's so funny how much this feels like the personal story right now. Also, weird telegraphing on the mini-map here. This is Dolia Khan. Wow, Magnus is interesting as well. We, we get to interact with him so rarely. Kind of cool voice dialogue lines there. All right, so I guess we go up and um, take these guys out. Where does this instance end? I swear, I only remember that little bit vaguely and at night. Okay, so we're getting some of our achievements now. Aether Apprehend uh, uh, Tyria. Kill Aether Blades in any location across Tyria. Does that mean I can't go to the edge of the mist to do it? <laughs> Not that I expect many players to be at the edge of the mist. So I was having a little bit of a look at the patch notes earlier. I was wondering if in this video I wanted to include them or do a dedicated video on, on patch notes or anything. Uh, and I was quite interested to see there was a pretty big patch like two weeks ago for like balance and stuff. Um, especially world versus world balance. Like they're trying to affect the way that Zergs are clashing and how viable it is to run into melee rather than just getting ranged down and so on. Um, but beyond that, I don't think that there's really been anything else much happening. Uh, maybe I'm wrong, but uh, I did try to catch up as much as I can while I've been away, and it, it doesn't feel like it feels like things have been quite slow on the Guildless front, which is good for me. Uh, Dream Half Remembered is from the Aureen teaser. Oh, is that what it is, really? That to me just sounds like kind of almost like a generic cliche. Um, fun thing that you might find in any number of movies or something. Oh my lord. Uh, Cograth uh, just uh, donated 500 SEK. I don't know what currency SEK is, man, but 500 sounds like a lot. Thank you very much. Uh, they've got a message. By the way, if any of you guys do that, if you want to drop a comment or a question so that I read it, I will answer. Uh, thank you, dude. Love your content. Been watching since Guild Wars 1. Keep up the great work. Well, I do intend to. I know I'm probably uh, people are losing a bit of faith here or something because um, there's been all these big gaps recently and I, I don't know how to get a handle on it. But um, thank you, man. I, I do very much intend to. I really appreciate that. Anyway, it's so funny. This living story is one of the first that like, you missed because you'd stopped playing Guild Wars 2. Yeah, I, a lot of people don't talk about that either, but we are also in that era. This is why I think this... For 2022, this is a really good window of patches, I think. Because what they're doing is re-implementing stuff that went in in an era that most people were quitting. Well, I don't know whether I'm qualified to say most people. That's probably, you know, who in the community can say that, right? But a lot of people were burning out of this game. And were thinking of this game as sort of a has-been. Or, or, you know, they were traditional MMO players that realized this game was going to do progression very differently. Or they were traditional MMO players, or Guild Wars 1 players that were expecting uh, like difficult PvE and instance PvE and none of that was happening. Or they were expecting expansions and no word of that was happening. Or they were expecting quality story with like a clear progression and that wasn't happening. There are a lot of things during this period, this is early 2013, mid 2013, that people were just losing interest. And it's not that everyone was making an active decision, okay I hate Guild Wars now. It was more just, you know, life goes on and people pick up other stuff and if you don't give people reasons to keep thinking about the game, then then they're going to trickle out. And I do look at this era of Season 1 a, a lot like that. You know, I was, uh, and I always have been, a super invested fan through all these eras, but um, uh, I, I especially remember the, um, the South Sun patches immediately before this. Um... With people like very very much losing heart. This is an interesting sequence here by the way because it's like a Guild Wars 1 section. Well, that's how I think it is. Guild Wars 2 very rarely does this. Just a huge area where they just want you to break all the crosses. Also this but this is now a little bit like one of the vigil missions as far as exploring old LA is concerned. Um, in that you actually get a pretty good slice to move down. You get Fort Mariner and the Piazza. I really do think that the re-implementation of Season 1 is a good opportunity for the studio to add Season um, Old LA as just one big map. I said that in a video a while ago. Oh, oh that's quite cool. Did I not have to kill them all? Or is it because the townspeople had finished some of the other ones off? I still think that would be a really good idea, even if it's just a story instance like this, but it's big and repeatable. Okay. Okay. 
Uh, you weren't quitting, but you were too young to understand how the living world worked back then. It was not normal story journal. That's really interesting that you say that you were too young. I'm going to have one of these horrible moments now. You're going to tell me that you were like eight, right? And now you've like finished university <laughs> or something like that. I'm not going to realize how much time has passed. This was no accident. I'm opening an official investigation into what just happened here. Okay. Thanks for your help. I think it's fair to say you saved a few lives today. Go enjoy what's left of Dragon Bash. There's nothing more to do here. I'll check in on the injured. All right, ceremony survivor and Ellen Keel kicks up the investigation. Kind of her introduction. Am I, am I crazy? Ellen, is Ellen Keel in the personal story? She's not, right? Isn't this sort of her introduction here? One of the counselors was seriously wounded in that strange discharge of energy and may die. That raises this to a whole new level of bad. Well, what are you going to do? Immediately initiate an investigation. I'm headed back to the crime scene now. Thanks for your help. I'm glad to have uh, helped. Okay. What about Magnus? Do you think he's around anywhere and I can talk to him and see what's going on? Uh, let's have a little bit of a look here. Um, hey, WV, will you finish Guild Wars 1 videos? You love that content. Uh, there's really nothing else for me to cover in Guild Wars 1. Uh, I'd never talked about the Silver Edge. Which was like this big easter egg that had been hidden in the game for years. Like made it like a decade before anyone realised what was going on. But, um, you know, I didn't feel particularly compelled to do a video on that. Because I, I kind of learned about Speak. what was going on a little bit late. And, um, and there's another YouTube channel. I don't, I haven't for probably about a year now. I haven't seen whether they're still doing anything. But they were called Guild Wars Reborn. And they'd covered it really well, and I thought, well, I'm not adding anything by covering this, so... Um, so I didn't do the Silver Edge. Technically, I never, like, did videos on progressing through Hero's Ascent and reaching a Hall of Heroes. But that would be, like, PvP stuff, and that would be, like, fighting bots at this point. I, I really have no interest in that. And um, finally, uh, the, the one big thing that I kind of maybe one day would do is a pre-searing playthrough. Like, a full... Because there's a lot of content in pre-searing that my original Let's Play never covered. And I've always said, if I ever got to the point where I was going to quit Guild Wars, just straight up quit this game, the last thing you'd see on me from YouTube would be, for this franchise, would be a, a pre-searing playthrough. I'd, I'd end it off with that. But uh, I have no plans to do that either, so, yeah. All right, E. He's messaged us twice now. He's even more active than uh, Ellen's been. Seek out Marjorie Delacroix. This, the situation's worsened. Wait, so what did they say here? I'm calling upon you because you're capable in the face of danger. Blah, 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 blah. So E already knew about the attack. So look, if we want to do some serious speculation about who E is, couldn't we in theory say that E has some deep connection specific to the Aether Blades? I mean, that's not necessarily true, but it's a thing you could think about. Anyway, the situation's worsened. One of the Lion's Arch counselors, Theo Ashford, has succumbed to his wounds. It's so weird. My memory of this event was that it was a specific, like, targeted attack. But this was more like just scattershot chaos, hoping one of them would die. And Theo did. So, the Lion Guard is keeping the news quiet. Well, how do you know then, E? While the festival continues, but they're overwhelmed trying to maintain security in the city. At this very moment, a killer walks free, and this cannot be allowed. Go to Divinity's Reach, to the Eastern Commons. There is a back alley bar called the Dead End. Sorry, let's reread that. There is a back alley bar called the Dead End. You'll find one of the best inve investigative minds in Tyria, Marjorie Delacroix. She'll need your help to find those behind the council's death. Tell her E sent you, work with her, sift through the clues, and solve the crime. I will surely contact you again. Now, this is interesting. We could read Marjorie's short story at this point. So That's another thing about this, by the way. I think I mentioned it on the previous episode of this playlist of this playthrough. The short stories kind of tell a lot, especially when we get to Scarlet Briar. Um, and they're kind of meant to be read. But by the way, I feel like the game looks so gorgeous. Is it just because I haven't played it for so long? It feels really good. Like, the, the anti-aliasing and stuff feels like perfect here. It's so beautifully soft and like, I'm getting good frames and it's all sturdy and brilliant. Anyway, anyway, anyway. Um, yeah, should we read the short stories? We've technically already skipped two because we could have read the Bram and the Rocks ones. I would have been an advocate for getting them in game somehow, but uh, as, a, as a matter of course in this story journal, but I don't know how they would have done that. 
All right, let's hit the the Dwayne away point and um, move on through. Uh, Blue Blip says, "Hey WP, are you still planning on taking your thief through End of Dragons? You've been rewatching my playthrough, and you'd love to see me on a, uh, a Spectre. Yeah, I do like the idea of doing that. I um, I'm kind of fascinated by how like totally disinterested in End of Dragons I've been since I stopped that series." Like, I was very close a couple of weeks ago, two, three, well, probably more like four weeks ago now, to doing, like, a fishing series. But then I just sort of thought, I'm really not interested enough in doing it. Or, like, even finishing these masteries, um, I haven't done, or, like, some of the side achievements and things. Like, while I was in it, I was really invested in it. And you guys saw, I've got videos of it all, you know. But then when I got that little bit of distance, I've just completely disconnected from it and, and become very, very uninterested. I actually think my opinion of the story of End of Dragons has gone down immensely. Like, I think I have a very, very poor opinion of End of Dragons now that I've had a bit of distance and a bit of, I don't know, breathing room from it or something. I, I really, it's, it's a very strange feeling that I've got with End of Dragons specifically at the moment. I've always had a low opinion of the this batch of elite specializations, but Spectre, I, I like the idea of playing, especially on like a celestial build, like a co-op celestial build. Um, so yeah, I don't know. Okay, this could be a cool cutscene here. Uh, I do, I would like to do that though, uh, certainly, especially when season six comes up. I kind of want that thief to go through all of those. In fact, I could do this on that thief, to be honest. I can't remember why we're not. Alright, I do love the way this looks. It's probably at least partly, uh, uh, due, in due partly to it. Alright. Yeah, here we go. This is the scene. Could have been just another dreary night. Well, it's really juddery, though. Smoky bar, or that siren song lulling drunks and lonely hearts deeper into their sorrows. It could have been. But then, he walked in. Logan Thackeray. The man with all the answers. Well, some of the answers, some of the time. Marjorie Delacroix? If it suits you. It suits me just fine. I want to hire you. There's been a murder. Lion's Arch Counselor Theo Ashford is dead. And I want to know who's responsible. Sounds like a job for the Lion Guard. What's got you peaked? Between you and me, Ashford's an old friend of the family. I want to make sure they find his killer. I see. And you don't trust the Lion Guard? Let's just say I'm hedging my bets. The pay's good. You in? How can I say no to Captain Lou? No names. I was never here. Maybe not. But your money is. I'm in. Lady Casimir, what are you doing in a place like this? It's interesting. You can look at the... This is a, like a really artistic cutscene, but to me it also... It looks like, you know, experimentation Excuse with how they can me, do cutscenes in Living what World. What did Logan Thackeray want? Justice, I guess. And he paid in advance. Where are you going this time? Lion's Arch. Come along if you like. I could use your special talents. Besides, Dragon Bash is in full swing. <gasps> Thank you. That's so kind. I believe I shall. Wow, oh, this is really interesting. So this is kind of their start. Th this is cool as well, by the way. How she's sitting on the bench. Was she always sitting on it like that? Because this would have been long before the update where you could sit on chairs and stuff. Or did they do this newly? Here we are. I mean, talking about End of Dragons, it's this is a great patch to have in the End of Dragons era. Because obviously this is where that all ends and so on. Can I grab this mug and drink? Oh no, I can sit on the benches. Oh my god, the camera's really weird though. Why is it jittering around like that so much? Is this a different sitting animation to what we usually would expect? A bench sitting thing? Hmm. Who else have we got at the bar? We have a patron, tavern patron, patron. The bartender will speak. Greetings, stranger. Welcome to the dead end. Don't mind the smell, just had a regular stop by. Uh, sorry, just had a regular stop by, so the regular was smelly. Got in a fight with his wife, couldn't hold his liquor. Place is clean, I promise. Where is this place? Only the finest and most secret dining establishment in Kryta. Uh, we've never had a customer leave unhappy and we never will. Come back anytime. It's E, guys. The bartender is E. <clears throat> I don't remember this guy and now he's suspect to me. How else would he, he know to recommend we come here and everything that's been going on? That's it. This is the guy. Um, there were a few comments in the live chat I wanted to respond to there. Oh my god, they, they might have already scrolled off. Uh, okay, someone asking about my frame rate. 
just wondering, you have a 12900K and a 3090, but your FPS isn't that great. I have a video all about getting good FPS. It's slightly before DirectX came in, but literally nothing changed. Everything I say in that video is still very valid, so I, I recommend you watch that. Um, and that, that should help your frames massively. Uh, not to sort of show my own stuff, but I, just in the, the spirit of not repeating myself too much. Um, what was the other thing? Someone wanted to... It was an End of Dragons comment. Uh, Guild Wars Repo Re Reborn still makes videos occasionally. He's the guild leader of LGIT in Guild Wars 1. Yeah, I mean, uh, I have I saw that he's very, very active. He's like the Guild Wars 1 coverage guy, and I, I really think that that's what people should be watching. Most people's praise of Ender Dragons come from a thirst of content after a long drought, so everyone, everything would have been fine as long as it's new content. I guess to a certain degree, yeah. I mean, look, I, I don't think Ender Dragons was bad necessarily, and there's a lot of different weight areas you can talk about End of Dragons. I think for me, what lingers, and they are, the, the more I've been away from the game, the, the worse it's started to feel for me, is how um, how the the whole mother and end of, end of Dragon, the end of the Dragon cycle stuff got resolved and all the stuff about the Void and that. I think that, that I, I don't know. I, I, I think I feel worse about that the more I think about it long term. But maybe that's okay, because obviously we're moving into different storylines now anyway, but yeah. How pleasant to see you. Hello, Kazmir. What a pleasure it is to see you. Pleasure's all mine. Hello. Hello. I like getting all these these voice oh, how are you? greeting lines. Because I don't know. Do, does Kazmir speak like this in season two? Or three? Or four? All right. I think we've exhausted them all. Let's see Marjorie's. You are showing an unnatural and unhealthy interest in my business. Is there something I can do for you? E sent me to help. It's weird the way that the uh, commander's written here, very short, very sharp, is, uh, that's so. I shouldn't be surprised. This isn't the first time he's provided me what I needed before I even knew I needed it. Name's Liss. Marjorie Delacroix. Looks like we're going to Lion's Arch, Liss. You got any outstanding warrants there? Not that I'm aware of. You? Not yet. Tell you what, introduce yourself to my friend over there, the blonde. I have to go pack my anti-pirate spray. I'll meet you in LA. Look at me. Look for me at the scene of the crime. You bet. What, what exactly is anti-pirate spray? Does it smell like sewage to stop people getting nearer? Hello, you're here to assist with the investigation into the murder in Lion's Arch. That's right. My name's Liz, my lady. Pleased to meet you. By all means, call me Casimir. However, did you come? Uh, know to come here? Well, he sent me. Ah, the mysterious mystery. There you go. Look, they even say the pun out loud. There, guys, mystery. I see. Well, uh, your assistance will be more than welcome, I'm sure. I'll see you in Lion's Arch. Okay, well, not much to it, I guess. There. Oh, we do get some optional. Quiet one. Optional dialogue at the bartender. This is suspect. Greetings, stranger. Welcome to the dead end. Don't, don't mind this much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that was the dialogue we'd already heard. It just made sure that I didn't miss it, I suppose. The dead end's always really weird. This, to me, feels like the front door. But the front door's actually around here. With this cool-looking gate. So what's through the other mystery door? You think the ghost mini's distracting? Yeah, you're probably right. I, it's my favourite mini in the game because of that sound effect. But I think you're probably right for the story playthrough. It might be a bit... <laughs> Keying up its audio a little bit too regularly. My god, all the confetti here. Greetings. Making me think about the infusion. Okay, so, um... The scene of the crime. Enter Lion's Arch from Gendaran Fields to investigate. Or, optionally, speak to Captain Logan Thackeray outside of the bar. Oh, well, Logan's here. Hi, Commander. What you uh, overheard in the bar? Your secret's safe with me. Wait, what did we overhear in the bar, though? That In the cutscene, right? What, what did he say exactly? Good to see you. What did Logan want? Justice, I guess. He paid. Oh, I don't think it printed the cutscene dialogue in the log, so I can't remember. What did he say in the cutscene? That he wanted? Uh, thanks. I know I shouldn't get involved. The Lion Guard are handling, but I just couldn't stand around and do nothing. Councillor Ashford was a friend. He had family. We'll figure this out. Oh, he just wants us to do this as well. It's all the same story. Okay. Today's a triple release. What do you mean by a triple release? I know that another challenge mode has come out. 
uh, which is cool. By the way, I, I, I'm completely disconnected. How, how was the previous one received when episode one came out? What's that challenge mode been like uh, as far as the community is concerned? Um, I remember they were saying that the easiest one, that they were doing like an order of difficulty, right? So maybe the, my expectation is that people beat the previous one too quickly or something. But I'm willing to forgive that because apparently that one's going to be the easier one and then it gets harder and harder. Yeah, but what's the triple release? New Zaitan variations? Yeah, so you can also now upgrade your Aurene weapon into the Zaitan mode. Now, they have a blog post, which I had a quick read of, um, on how you do that. And it sounds really uninteresting. It sounds like there's very little going on with that. Um, so that's a bit sad. But they did confirm that there are five other variations, so the Deep Sea Dragon will get its own exclusive one. So I wonder what the aesthetic will be. The theory about having a uh, final set for getting all of them with the Void set, uh, so far I, I've not heard anything about. Why make an easy challenge mode? No, no, no. I think the idea is that it's the easier... Obviously everything's going to be comparable. Some things will be harder than other things. It's just natural. So the point is that you some of them like will be tuned charge. slightly. You're smarter than you look. It's still worthy of a challenge mode. So my mama always said. But I'm not here for witty banter. Satisfying as that might be. I'm a private investigator from Divinity's Reach, and I want to offer you my services. What could you possibly offer that the Lion Guard doesn't already have covered? <laughs> That's a loaded question. Let me tell you about my Tassie box. I bought it off a snotty little Asur. It can detect all manner of energy fluctuations. May I demonstrate? Now you've got me curious. Of course, curiosity killed the cat. But go on, show me. So, is this what we already used in the original release? But Just when press we press were... those buttons and see what glows. What does that glow mean? It means the dead char recently came in contact with the arcane residue, not while his life was passing before his eyes. No kidding. Not even if you ask nicely. So he was in on it. Yeah, isn't this device the same thing we were using to like detect energy readings around the consortium and the Karka or something, maybe, in the original release? I can't exactly remember. Uh, so you have to have an Aurene weapon already. You can't just make it right into a Zytem one. Exactly, yeah. You have to already have made the Aurene one, which I haven't done. And I haven't been doing my daily thing as well to get the pieces. So I don't have any of that and therefore no interest in this Zytem thing. If it had a really cool acquisition process, maybe it could have been a hook for me, but it just isn't at the moment. My instincts haven't been failed yet. Failed me yet, man, guys. I gotta tell you, I got a really weird thing going on at the moment with me, which is I don't know why, but I feel like I'm underwater. Like my ears feel weird. Like when I'm hearing the game, when I'm hearing my own voice as I speak right now, it feels like like I'm listening to everything through a membrane. It feels really weird, and it's proper throwing me off. I've been having it the whole video, and I don't know what it is. I keep, like, pressing under my ears, hoping I'll, I'll feel like a pop or something, and it'll go away, but it's not there. It's like I've got water in my ear, but I don't have water in my ear. Isn't that strange? Okay, my instincts haven't found me yet, blah, blah, blah. Uh, what do you need me to do? Take one of the boxes and test people. I've already tested you, so you've been cleared. Okay, well, I'll take a box. Just point and click. The box, uh, the box is designed to reveal auras, and I programmed it to highlight residual energy. It's crudely programmed at the moment, but I can fine-tune the settings as we learn more. Okay, so I think here's how we're going to end up fingering uh, my trin. How does this work? Oh, oh. Point and click, literally. Oh, and we can aim at anyone with a starburst? Okay, well, let's throw it at Marjorie. I'd point that thing at a suspect if I were you. You are a suspect. Everyone's a suspect. Calibrating commander? Yes, yes, calibrating. <laughs> I quite like that. Let's throw it at this guy. See Lottie. I feel like he is in um, the instance here when you meet with Destiny's Edge at level 30 as well. You get a similar feeling sometimes when you have a cold. Yeah, it's a little bit like that, but it's a really warm, hot summer's day, and I definitely don't have a cold. Am I high? <laughs> no, no, I'm not high. Clean my ears. I just had a shower. Are we done here? I need to return home to the Togatl by nightfall. We will be seen. Saraki, the Grawl. Have you come to ask questions? Oot, oot. 
Where have you come to go, kid to survivor? Disgusting. Show respect for the dead and wounded. Wow. That guy is not written like a growl at all. <laughs> Goodbye. Uh, or maybe these guys are some of the dudes you see at, like, Fort Trinity. That You know, they're the representatives of the races. Does that mean we'll see a quagging around somewhere, for example? Um, this isn't here. Oh. Oh, I got her. I didn't mean to do that. This is, it's, it's her. You must be kidding. Don't fret. You'll come to no harm unless you had a hand in what happened. Hmm. Huh. She's glowing. All right, lady. You better start. I wanted to scan everyone Are first. Are you accusing me? Wait. Could she have gotten it from the dead char that glowed? She attempted to revive him. <laughs> the detective would know that too. If she paid better attention to her crime scene. Oh, disappointment. Well, you're one lucky little pirate, you are. Consider yourself exonerated. Okay, so maybe not yet then? Get that thing away from me unless you want it thrown into the harbour. Okay, I'll go away now. We've got Izuri over here. I have all my papers, my identity cog, the Arcane Council proclamation, and the contribution manifest. Anything you wish to inquire about, ask, please, I'm innocent. Who are you? Izuri, honors graduate of the College of Dynamics from Ratasum, chosen by the Arcane Council to be the Azuran component of the Dragon Bash presentation and ritual. Uh, well, what did you see? <sighs> oh, that terrible sight. As the other representatives put their items into the effigy, I noticed a strange reaction taking place inside. Strange how? There was a certain arcane chromatic discharge, as if a cascading escalation were taking place. Certainly not supposed to happen. Well, that's enough for now. Here we got Farley. Are you in charge here? I've been telling the lying guard I had nothing to do with what happened. All this hassle should have never left Evanhawk. Who are you? For the millionth time, I'm Farley Wallin. Appointed by both Commander Samuelson and Queen Jenna to be the cu human cultural ambassador for Dragon Bash. Commander Samuelson's an interesting one. I think um, a lot of people have been hoping for a storyline with him for a long time and it's just not happened. What do you see? Well, before the blast, I noticed the char was acting fidgety. Then I noticed some of the other representatives also looked nervous. Which ones? Well, the ogre, that quaggan, the silvari, and a script. I thought it was a stage fright or something. Okay, so all non-humans. Whoopsie, I missed. <laughs> uh, questions, questions, questions. Too many questions. Proper hunters would have caught their Excuse prey by now. Oh, I don't know why I read a voice like that. But I have news. Five of the cultural representatives failed to report in. We better track them down. Ms. Delacroix, I'll contact you and your associates when we have something to investigate. Thanks for everything. Okay, can we go back to her and get that dialogue again? Yeah, here we go. Who are you? I'm Kira Timberhorn, descendant of Gina Woodsplitter. And a non-cultural representative. Um, so what did you see? There were too many people moving around, too many noises, too many distractions. I like how she's just straight up grumpy. Oh my god, guys, I keep clicking outside of the game and it's freaking me out. I'm going to accidentally click a button that just pulls this video offline. And it's going to be really weird. Okay. We know that the char representative was probably involved, but I wonder if he had accomplices. It doesn't seem like a one assassin job. Agreed. We're still missing five of the cultural representatives who were, who were here at the time. They ran off before we could stop them. So how can I help? I can ask around, Inspector, says Marjorie. I'll contact our mutual friend here if I hear anything. I'll be waiting. Sounds good. Until then, get some rest. Oh, the instance is done, is it? But we can talk to the, air quotes, citizen again. Good thing Inspector Keel remembered that she'd sent me to help the char. That could have had a very different ending. You had a near miss. I'm sorry I wasn't able to save him. I am. Now, they won't let me leave. They think I did it. You mentioned you have medical experience. I do. I'm my trin. Not my first time trying to save someone from an injury like that. Not the first time I failed either. It never gets any easier. Hang in there, my... You know what I think's really cool? That here in this amazing PvP game mode, um, the miss champion, my trin, you know, she's got all these different skins... And there's the skin we see her in in End of Dragons. There's the skin we see her in, you know, before then. And then there's this super secret skin here with the green... <laughs> that I can't remember ever seeing her wear, but apparently she originally was. That would be cool, wouldn't it, guys? If Stronghold was, uh, was a big deal. Alright, let's get out of here. Oh my god, was that... Did I just see Kazmir in the background walking off? The ore maps in Ara Dungeon are filled up right now because of the new legendaries. Yeah, I did see that. On the blog post, they said that getting the Zaitan weapons requires gameplay in ore. And I really liked the sound of that because it, it brings population and excitement and enthusiasm back to uh, 
to those maps, which is cool, but it's always like this temporary thing, you know? I I'd much rather they look at dailies and stuff to, to get regular influxes of people back to those places. But uh, it sounds like it's going to be a, a very cool couple of weeks, at the very least, to go back to Or and, and see massive amounts of players doing the temples and stuff again, like we haven't seen for years. Margie Delacroix, Delacroix Investigations. Liss. Suspects located is the, the title. The Lion Guard have leads on three of the five missing suspects. I'd love to get lost in this mystery, but I'm needed the Lion's Arch. We only just met, but I need someone who can travel to interrogate the suspects, and you've proven critical in the investigation. Kazmir's wrapped up with paperwork back at the bar. Do what you can to convince the suspects to return to Lion's Arch, and take, the good no take good notes on anything interesting. Here's the intel we've got on their locations. We've discovered footprints from the Ogre suspect, Vork, leaving the crime scene in Lion's Arch. Follow them. Reports indicate that Morulu, the Quaggan suspect, is in blood tide in the Sorofo Sound. Find him. And the Skrit suspect, Kasparak, was sighted in Gendaran Fields near the Ulm Newton estates. I'll continue the investigation into the whereabouts of our last two suspects, but be wary, trust your instincts, stay alive. Okay, so those three maps, it may well be the. Uh, those three maps once... Should I mount? Were we not mounting before? Or were we mounting? Might have had open world events and stuff spawning around them. Which might be the case here too, so we'll see. Tomorrow, we're gonna find the biggest apple ever. It's good to see you, Cossage. You really look forward to finding out if they kept my train Scooby-Doo villain dialogue. What, does she do? Does she have a little thing at the end where she says, I would have got away with it if it weren't for you meddling kids? I, I honestly don't remember that. I don't see why they'd remove that, though. That sounds fun and silly, and <clears throat> but not, like, completely immersion-breaking. Talking about Scooby-Doo, I saw a friend playing that new uh, Warner Brothers game the, the other day. Um, uh, Multiverses, where you can be, like, Superman fighting Velma. <laughs> I'm not joking. Or you could be, like, Harry Potter fighting Finn the Dog. And like some characters I don't recognize. Actually, I don't think any of the Harry Potter characters are in it just yet. Uh, but I think it, they were like Kate of Mind or something. Really weird game. It's like uh, it's like Smash Bros, but with Warner Brothers properties. Okay, so track down the script in Gendaran. Ah, uh, you know, all, seeing all the players and where they're standing is kind of a little bit of a giveaway. But hey, let's assume we would have seen this anyway. This guy looks cool. I like his colors, right? Like, the Guild Wars 2 2 logo icon is a bit crappy and a bit immersion breaking to me. But the general vibe of his whole get up is pretty cool. You bring Hello. me something? You bring me something? You want shiny? You smell like sea! Good smell though. Shiny man, give me big shiny for big party! Said they give other screen a long vacation. That was nice. Okay. I need you to return to Lion's Arch for questioning. The Lion's Arch? No, no! Big noise! Screaming! Very scary! Didn't know what to do! Felt guilty for running. We'll stay out here. Stay safe. Yes, yeah, stay safe. Okay, we can. We have our personality options. Hmm. I'm gonna lure him back to Lion's Arch with the shiny things. You sure? There are lots of shiny things back in Lion's Arch. Really? Okay, back to Lion's Arch we go. Toodle do. Good. I'll meet you there. All right. That's one out of three. Where do we want to go next? Oh, we have to do it in a very specific order. Okay, so. Moralu in the Blood Tide Coast. Now, didn't they say he's at Sorrowful Sound? Isn't that... Where is that? I guess we'll just load in and see if it's got a marker before I spend ages mousing around on the map. Oh, wasn't one of the Blishud add-ons? One of the cool Blishud add-ons I kind of wanted to show you guys was it's a world map up thing like this, but it means that you can type in, like if we were looking for Sorrowful Sound, I could click say down here in the bottom left, and there would be a filter and you could just type and it's Sorrowful Sound and it would show you exactly where the place is from there in game, which is like so handy. Right, what do we got? Track down the, the Quaggan on the mini map, it's definitely marked. Ah, oh, there you go, Sorrowful Sound's top left. Ah, uh, near Sorrow's Bay, <coughs> which is interestingly on another map. I like that, that continuity there. Uh, okay, so. Perhaps, is this, is this the location where the hat trees, maybe? Oh god, it's not going to be at the end of Professor Portmat's lab, is it? 
I would see uh, if any spuds are standing here, but it looks like the spuds haven't got to this bit of the release just yet. Oh, well, you get the icon over there anyway. He's in this house. Uh, Shaman's new historical guide to Tyria with markers for different regions. Oh, did he do a big update? I haven't seen that. More Alu. Please don't hurt. Oh, God. We've got to remember our Quaggan voice here. Please don't hurt Quaggan or Quaggan's tadpoles. Quaggan just did what Quaggan was told. They threatened Quaggan's nursery. Quaggan had to carry the offering to the effigy. Who is they and what did they do to your offering? Quaggan didn't recognize them and it was dark. They did something to the Quaggan's offering. It was fast. Quaggan didn't think. Phew, at least the tadpoles are safe, the yes. little ones. Quaggan stands strong. Hmm. Quaggan will not let them win. Oh, he's, he's a deep voice, Quaggan. Quaggan, okay. <laughs> Let's be ferocious. Your tadpoles will be ashamed of you if you don't do what's right. Oh, you are right. Quaggan will come to Lion's Arch if only to set a good example for the tadpoles. Good, I'll see you there. All right, and finally, Vork, who is in Lion's Arch. Now, an ogre in Lion's Arch, I'm going to assume, is the top right. I mean, if he's not at the postern wall, then where the hell's it going to be? I'm going to say that now, and he's not going to be here at all. By the way, WP, I don't know if you know, but you can use your boat in the Claw Island oh, instances. Dude! So yeah, good, good. That is really cool. No, I didn't know that. You can use your boat in Claw Island. Wow, they didn't put fishing spots and stuff there, did they? Wait, really? How is that possible, though? They don't let you mount in there. They let, they let you skiff but not mount? I wonder if that's just, like, forgetfulness on the part yeah, of the yeah. devs. Long live Lion's Arch. Long live... Uh, an ogre here. At the, at the terraces. Well, bizarre. I don't. I don't know. I honestly don't. There's a bunch of players here already. <laughs> Put him next to the ecto gambler. Hey guys, you remember this? Gold sink. Don't don't work on your uh, your Zaitan legendary. Why not try a. Uh, Try your luck at some uh, ecto gambling. I actually do have arrows apparently leading me somewhere. Oh my god, it is near the ecto gambler. Sort of. Doesn't getting up there actually involve going through the watery tunnel? Oh my lord, he's here, passed out. This is quite interesting. Because aren't we seeing a weird. Um this is like technically new, isn't it? Because we are in New Lion's Arch, but we're speaking to an ogre that would have originally just been in Old Lion's Arch. So they've they've done something special here, something new, by having him in this spot. Upon closer inspection, this corpse matches the description of the missing Dragon Bash ogre representative. Search the area for clues of Tassie's box. Oh, I thought I was actually going to do it. The Tassie box detects anomalous arcane materials on the corpse. Log materials as evidence. Okay, so what have we learned here? That the ogre might have been involved? Okay, so Marjorie's messaging us now. Last two suspects found. Lists. Kia and her line guard have tracked down the last two suspects. As with the previous three, I'll leave it to you to handle the questioning. And here are our leads. The Coden suspect, Trembling Song, has been spotted in Snowden Drifts. Unsubstantiated rumors place our Silvari suspect, Astora, hiding out in the uh, Calon Forest in the Rowan Woods. I got really confused there because her name is Astora, which is very close to Astorea, which is the name of a village in Caledon Forest. So I thought I was reading the, the location, not the person, and I'd messed up. Um, or it might not be in Calon, but it rings a bell. I've been examining the clues already recovered. The Tassie box uncovered trace elements with magical properties. I'm not sure yet, but my guess is that these components formed a compound that turned the effigy into a death trap. I think our last two suspects hold the final pieces to this puzzle. Whatever you discover, return to this crime scene in Lion's Arch afterwards so we can share our findings. Okay. So basically, these guys have done nothing. Because we found and interrogated the first three. And they specifically said, we'll do the other two. And I remember thinking at the time, okay, you'll, I'll do the majority then. You'll do the other two, but fine, I'll do the majority. And now, what have they done? They've just pointed us to the last ones, which we'll do as well. So we'll do all five. Okay, Marjorie, we're getting off to a really great start here. 
Yeah, Astraea is just outside the grove. Thank you, the grove, sorry. Thank you, William, thank you. I'm not crazy. It's where you wake up, right? And like, it's, it's literally your birthplace if you are a civil warrior. I don't seem to have any arrows this time. There is a command tag. But are they standing at the NPC? Or are they just randomly tagged up flying around? Oh, they're standing at the NPC. How handy. That's kind of interesting. They might not have cognizantly done that. They might not have specifically be trying to help people out, but they are just by nature of the fact that they're standing still to read the dialogue. You're not here to kill me, that's obvious. And you're not a lion guard. You found me all the way out here, so you're good at what you do. Tell me, who are you? I need you to come to Lion's Arch for questioning. Oh my lord, someone's lured something over here. I didn't kill anyone and I'm not setting up one manic and I'm not setting one manicured toe back in the city without a good reason. I'll set up. <laughs> do you still worry have manicures, I guess? What are you talking about? They pose quite the argument. The Be on that stage or face the police. I used my wiles to get the representative the spot, then they gave me a trinket. I didn't have a choice, I can't go back there. <laughs> we could say that the Lion Guard are pushovers. Oh, I like this one, I, I like the dignified one. Lion's Arch needs you, stand up for justice in return to give your testimony. Ha ha ha! By the mother, you're serious. See, Doing the right thing will leave you alone, poor and dead. But all right, I'll come back. I know your face from my dream. Oh, I like her. She's not easy to convince, but she did it anyway. Okay, so and then finally the Coden trembling song in Snowden Drifts. It does now sound more like I remember oh, the event, I which said. is a specific Let's targeted assassination. Like if they had Theo stand in that specific spot. Hey WP, any plans on continuing the 14 playthrough? Yeah, my plans haven't changed at all. I would still really like to do that. I'd love to do an Endwalker series. The big question on my mind right now is, um, uh, do I want to do it on YouTube or do I want to do it on Twitch? And there's like pros and cons to both of them and I'm not sure which way I want to go. I'm also now, basically, to be very honest with you, I've got a lot of anxiety that no one would really watch it at this point because it was it was like half a year ago that we were setting up um, getting into Endwalker and I, I wonder whether people have just completely lost their enthusiasm or their investment. But yeah, I still have the game installed. I've actually been playing a sub the whole time. I will probably need a bit of time now to actually just play it and get used to it again and get back in the, the, the headspace. But I, I would still really, really love to do it. And I know that their next patch is out as well now too, so it'd be cool to do that back to back. Um, none of my plans have changed. Uh, and t uh, like the person saying 12 as well, you know, it's kind of funny how the two Final Fantasy series there. Oh my god, I'm trying to walk this and maybe I should have waypointed because that's actually quite a long way. Also, I'm amazed that that Skelk, that Skelk attacked me half the map away and managed to hold me in combat for that long. That was crazy. Yeah, let's, let's Raptor over. It's really not adding anything to the experience <laughs> when we could have just waypointed anyway. It's the opposite. Endwalker MSQ audience is hungry. Yeah, I just, I don't know. It's probably really misplaced silly anxiety, which, uh, you know, often happens. But it's been a while, and it also is because I don't have a definitive start date for the project as well. I feel like it'll be like this thing where I'll start doing it, but people won't be there for it. They won't realise it's happening, and then and then you don't want if you're not there on day one. I feel like you kind of don't want to follow it. Time is precious, like new forms. Or a lot of people are like that anyway. Anyway, uh, are you Coda's judgment come at last? I'm ready to oh. surrender my blood and spirit to you. Ah, oh, now look at this. This is a moral person. We need to hear your side of the story. My shame is my shadow. All things in the end will find balance. I caused a death by breaking a vow. Now I must give up my own life to pay for it. Either by my hand or by Coda's will. Okay. Let me be your judge. Tell me your tale. I was chosen by my brethren to take the long walk from Frostgorge Sound to Lion's Arch to be part of the ceremony. Well, what's wrong about that? I passed a camp where friendly folk beckoned me to How warm myself by their campfire. I, I should not have given like in to temptation. I know that line about the sky meeting the sea. While I slept by the fire, they must have tampered with my race's offering for the effigy burning. If I hadn't stopped, I would have had no part in the death and destruction. I believe you. Come plead your case. 
It would seem the Coda has sent you. I hear your words and I abide them, Army and Liza. Time is precious, like new fallen snow. Time is precious, like new fallen snow. Okay, hard boiled. Okay, so enter Lion's Arch from Gendaran Fields and return to the scene of the crime once more. These are little instructions on the top right. Are really quite verbose. I quite like them. <laughs> you forgot about my Coden voice. To be fair, I feel like I just made that up on the spot two minutes ago, hearing her voice. And <laughs> I, I, when have I ever done female Coden before? I think I usually just skip that over and just read it normally. I'm in a, a, a voicey kind of mood today, though. All right, no more secrets. You're not a FF fan, but you watched the 12 one a couple of times. The 12 one, the problem with 12 that I've got is that um, I had a really specific... Oh, that was my own modded setup. I made mods. I published them on the Nexus and stuff. Like, I had a really specific setup. And I've got to find a way of recovering all of that. And, like, I, basically, I have to do a complete replay through of my old mods and then I have to like I probably need to watch my own series as well which I always find very difficult to do to watch my own stuff but I got to do that to get into the exact perfect headspace so that when I pick the series back up it's it doesn't feel weird you know I'm not going to do half of the game in one spirit and, and half the game in another spirit so to pick it back up is actually a job in itself like I got to do that the other thing as well is the mods I was doing I hadn't even finished my plan was like, most of the terrible boss fights in that game that I was going to, like, improve a little bit and then show you guys on the videos, I was going to make the, um, I was going to make the mods as I played through the Let's Play. So, the mod creation would precede that episode by just a couple of days. So, I've got to re relearn all the tools on how they work. And, in fact, it's been about a year now, so uh, those tools are probably updated, too. I don't know what their community is like. But that means I've got to start talking to people in that community again, which was a, a weird experience in the first place. So this is all these little wriggles, you know, and uh, and it, it's just basically put me off getting back to it. Not it's not that the plans changed. It's just these are the reasons I have. I'll make an educated it. guess that these ingredients are all I need to fine tune the tassie box settings. Oh, I like the way she said that. A bit of what do they call it, a vocal crackle, maybe, and the word settings. Okay, I recalibrated the Tassie boxes to defect a refined combination of the chemical compounds found around the crime scene. Fire one up and let's see who, what secrets it reveals. By the way, I just want to say, this phase of the patch has lasted a lot longer than I thought it was going to. When we first got here earlier, I was almost expecting just like one cutscene and then we're done. But no, this is actual gameplay and story to play through here. And I'm assuming it's not just the assassination. It's called Sky Pirates, so I'm assuming... I mean, I made the thumbnail for this video as the Zephyrites in the sky. I assume we get to the Zephyrites. Look at all this stuff that's written in the journal here, by the way. Out of the blue, an elusive benefactor named E wrote and directed to me to the effigy ceremony at Dragon Bash, claiming the captain's council was under some sort of threat. It was a faceless lead, but the only one I had. Another letter from E today. Captain Theo Ashford succumbed to his wounds. E recommended that I stop by the Dead End Bar. I've never heard of this Marjorie Delacroix, but E's intel's good. I'm just curious what the commander thinks about E. I'll learn at every little meeting with one of these racial characters. Trembling Song was the most helpful and seems somewhat, uh, at least somewhat remorseful. This is quick to share. Alright, here we go. Oh, look, look, night is falling. It's finally the correct Dragon Bash ambience. It's weird that that hologram thing's there, but it's not actually projecting any dragon in the sky. Okay, uh... Let's give see me what test. new evidence it turns up. Nice see, I job. I feel like with the original patch, you actually got given an item. You could double-click at any time. So that thing that says, I need another box. Maybe that served a different, a slightly more specific function before. Alright, trembling song. The truth is revealed. The light shows the way. At the very least, they could have given us some ale for the wait. Oh, it's because I'm speaking to Kira somehow. Alright, I could use one too. My hands are clean, of course. The Hylic representative stares you down. He isn't pleased. I feel like they need some kind of marker to show when it's like stage directions rather than actual dialogue. Dialogue. I'm just doing my due diligence, sir. 
I always love scanning for all the dialogue in scenes like this. It's like unlocking extra little Easter eggs and extra value and detail that you know most people will miss. This better mean I'm innocent because this isn't my color at all. Ew, it's not your color, is it not? Yeah, you're good. What is happening to Quaggan? <laughs> Quaggan's colorful. <laughs> I actually, I really like that. Can you do that again? <laughs> That's my favorite Quaggan noise I've ever heard. Ooh! ooh. <laughs> His actual shock during the ooing is is really good. Oh, glowing, shiny, I'm shiny. Ooh, shiny, shiny, shiny. <laughs> Okay, she's pretty cool as well. Hey, Tay Cristiano. Hey, WP. Have a wonderful day. Thank you very much. I hope you have a lovely day uh, yourself. Uh, still no signs pointing out any of our suspects. Disappointing. The Tassi box is upgraded, right? I could try rescanning the others again. Not a bad idea. Let's give it a shot. Okay, so I know that if I go straight to... Oh, she's not even here, though. Well, whatever. Okay, so Izuri... Still innocent. Can I go now? It's interesting to me that um, this is what a detective sequence is in Guild Wars. It's just spamming all the waypoints, basically. It, it, it's very hard for a game to do, like, a detective, like, investigation, like, mystery, like, story. Without the whole game being a, about that. And about being a really sophisticated RPG. You know, it's like you'd find that if you're playing like a Sherlock Holmes kind of game, right? Or um, one of the only like more general like broad RPGs I've ever played that did a really good investigation is the start of Divinity Original Sin. Where you're trying to find out who murdered a counsellor. Just as we are here, but there it's Counselor Jake. And it's right at the start of the game. And if you go into that blind and you really don't know anything, you really have a lot of fun. Like you go to this village of Cyseal. And you speak to like a ton of different people there. And you really, you will piece it together in your own way as well. It's really good. This Hylic uh, representative stares you down. He isn't pleased. Oh, this is, okay. So we already heard this. Sorry, Farley, I missed. Yeah, I, uh, yeah, I'm just You're checking again. Next. You must be kidding. Okay, people didn't miss uh, the dialogue. All right, you ready, line guard? She might try and run. I like how she's the most relaxed of everyone as well, sitting down. Ahem. Are you seeing what I'm seeing? Looks like our little helper pirate was helping herself. Marjorie Delacroix. I'll remember that. My Trin, you're under arrest by Lion Guard authority. You will present yourself- <laughs> So much for discretion. Crew, it's time to earn your pay. And here we go, this is our first sight of the Aether Blades. In their outfits and their whole attacking styles and everything. Oh, the Raven, of course. Yeah, of course. And what a fun playthrough that was. You know, I really, really, really love games like that. If I knew more about that genre or, like, who actually makes quality games in that genre, I, I would do so many more playthroughs like that, I'd like to believe. Those are so fun. And I feel like you get a lot out of doing those blind as well, you know. Like, I always have these insecurities about doing stuff blind. But those... Like, it, it flourishes because you're speculating constantly about what might be about to happen, or who did what, or why, and so on. But yeah, I really don't know any other studio that does that kind of game that well. Sheila! Thank you very much, Sheila, for the ten dollars! Just as more money! <laughs> Thank you very much, that's really nice. Divinity's great for that uh, mystery aspect. Yeah, it is. It is. It's actually one of the reasons I prefer... The sequel has more robust combat mechanics and, you know, leveling and stuff like that and, and fights, there's no doubt, and it's better paced and so on. It also is a bit tricky in some ways, like with the physical shields and you, you kind of punish for hybridizing your playstyle. But uh, anyway, um, as far as story's concerned, I really liked that about the first, and I'm interested to see what they do with Baldur's Gate 3. We haven't seen the last of the Aether Blades. <laughs> Baldur's Gate is one of those series as well that I feel like I should go back and, and actually play as an adult. Because I, I have flashing memories of it as like a little kid. But what's always really profound to me about Baldur's Gate, right, as someone that doesn't really know anything about it, except like its genre and there's these very, very loose memories, is um, like when I'm on Reddit, I have this, uh, like, just general, like, generic video games-related multi-reddit, and 
people are constantly talking about Baldur's Gate. Like, it's popular and its fandom is big enough and excitable enough that, like, decades later, people still talk about it and consume it and have fun with it like it's a modern new title, and it's not. It's nowhere near that. So that, to me, speaks to what must be a really quality game. If it's got that kind of longevity to it, you know, there must be something really, really profound and good about it. Just, just, and I've seen it year in, year out, month in, month out, constantly discussion about that. So, uh, yeah. All right. Anyway, anyway. Sorry, sorry. Her name was My Trin, and she had us all fooled. But she's not getting away. Not on my watch. I'll let you know as soon as we've tracked her down. Sounds like another case for the Dead Acquire investigation team. Not this time. Miss Mead and I are headed back to Divinity's Reach. How come? Now that we know who the culprit is, the rest of the, the rest is line guard work. This is their jurisdiction after all, so Kaz and I are on to the next job. Safe travels. So goodbye to Marjorie and Kazmir. For now. I'd keep your head down if you're uh, sticking around to help. Things are going to get ugly fast. I'm headed back to Divinity's Reach in the interim. You're leaving already? I'm no lion guard. I don't make arrests. You should drop in at the dinner bar when you get a chance. I eat you a drink. I'll do that. Okay, so as far as I remember... That is the end of the first patch. The second patch is the the secret, is the hideout, if I remember rightly. But again, these patches were like open world things, you know? There was the not so secret jumping puzzle in Gendaran Fields that got added. You guys remember this? I mean, is the story journal going to take me here? I mean, that would be cool. Also, where are they going to put the entrance? Because the entrance used to be behind a waterfall that I don't think we can access anymore, can we? In New LA, everything's different. So this is all going to be really, really curious now. Okay, speak with Keel. Fight back against Aetherblade pirate activity in Blood Tide. That doesn't even say optional, by the way. So I think we'll have to do it. Planescape Torment is one of the best stories in a video game you've ever played. Well, tell me more about that. I, I recognize the title there, but... See, I get all that stuff confused. All that, like, because I'm not really a D&D &D guy. Not as much as I probably should be. But, like, it, that when I, th when I see Planescape, that makes me think of, like, Neverwinter and stuff, right? Which are settings within D&D? Is Planescape a setting within D&D, or is it... I, I really don't know. Great characters are in Baldur's Gate. Yeah, I think I remember the last discussion I saw about it was literally like two days ago or something. And someone was saying that they're mind blown with how old Baldur's Gate is. But when you go to a city and you listen to like the ambient dialogue when you're like in a town or something, it sounds really immersive and like, like better than most modern games. Like it really, really stands up. And I distinctly remember that that feel as well when I have like these nostalgic memories. Like I have certain odd bits of snatching nostalgia from when I was a little kid and I'd like watch my dad play games. Like everyone knows Myst, right? Myst had a sequel called Riven. And Riven is the weirdest thing to me because I never played Riven, but I watched my dad playing Riven for like hours and hours and hours as a little kid. So whenever I see like images of Riven or sounds from Riven, it puts me into a really, really weird like emotional state of like odd nostalgia for a life that I can hardly remember now, you know? And it's just like screenshots and things from Riven. It's on Steam, by the way, so if anyone is at all curious. But I, it sends me on a real roller coaster, just sort of seeing glimpses of it. And Baldur's Gate's a little bit like that for me as well. Yeah, there you go. Baldur's Gate is in D&D, and Planescape is a D&D saying. But I don't really know what that means, though. Oh, well, I'm, I'm, I'm an idiot. We were supposed to speak to Ellen Keel, and I just sort of wandered through. But where would she be? At Fort Mariner, I would guess, but I don't know. You loved Riven and Mist as a kid? See, all I really remember for those is, like, the sights and the sounds of the thing. And I get, like, the idea, you know. Um, but I don't have anything, like, super distinguishing that I could tell you about them. Okay, so that was just leading me to Blood Tide. Do I have another marker? No? Maybe she's in Blood Tide, you know? Cause they could just put her face anywhere, I suppose. Her office? Oh, wait, she wouldn't have an office yet. Yeah, that's a good point as well. I didn't even think of the office. But no, she's not even captain. Have I been calling her a captain? She's not a captain. Sorry about that, guys. That's a little spoiler there. 
Help stabilize Blood Tide Coast against Aetherblade Pirates by completing events and finding clues. Finding clues about their base. I want to find clues. Let's ask in map chat. Where is Ellen Keel? Does anyone know where Ellen Keel might be? I'm the law around here, and the law is stretched pretty thin. Please. Oh. Have a good time, but not too good. Oh, I can hear her. <laughs> I she's right there. <laughs> I feel so stupid. Not only was that waypoint being spammed <laughs> in the chat box, but she was right there anyway. All right. Ah, Commander Liz, good to see a friendly face. We're looking for the whereabouts of the Aetherblade base. I'm looking forward to seeing I'm you the work. I'm law around here, and the law is stretched pretty thin. This is cool dialogue. What do you need? We're looking for the whereabouts of the Aetherblade base. My agents have reported seeing encoded messages throughout the region. I need your help tracking them down. Hold on, was the base behind this waterfall? No, I'm, I'm totally misremembering that, right? Uh, the line guard are busy tracking down my trin. We're hot on her trail, but not quite ready. Okay, I'll help. Thanks, Commander. You'll find the messages around Blood Tide Coast. We're also countering various Aetherblade attacks, so feel free to jump into the fray and remind them who we are. I've got so many males here, it's unreal. Okay. You'll find the dead drops scattered throughout Blood Tide Coast. Here's a rough location for each drop. Northwest of Laughing Goat. Oh, they we don't even have to read these necessarily because they seem to be marked on the minimap. I'll do it anyway. Northwest of Laughing Go Island. Near a lookout tower on Laughing Go Island. Under a ship off of the Jalaco Cliff Rise. On a hill in the Firth of Ravanion. I love that word, Ravanion. Is that a, an actual word or is that just a, a fictional proper noun that they've got here? Ravanion. That really rolls off the tongue. It's because it doesn't have any hard consonant sounds in it. That's why. Ravanian. There's no tz or kz or anything or x's. Uh, near Mistarian Beaches shoreline. Good luck. Okay. Uh, what are they called? Plosives? No. Is it? Was it plosives? Oh, I can't remember. Who. I could use your help. Basically, imagine you took the D&D rule and setting books and made your own campaign with original lore and characters. But if you've taken a setting book, how have you how is it your original lore if you've taken a setting book? I don't understand what that means. It's basically uh, is a way to say this is it's fan fiction. Is that is that the way to say this? It's D and D fan fiction, but it's done in such a way that it's like that Elder Scrolls thing. What what was the Elder Scrolls thing? I can't remember. But where one of the writers said that look, you know, ca canonicity is in the the hands of the community, right? So so as much to say, anyone can do what they want with the setting, and it's also it's as authentic as what anyone else does with the setting. I can see how that kind of mindset would totally be in keeping with D and D as a game as well. So. Okay, so we go. We got a hideout clue here. D and D settings are like alternative worlds. The default setting is Faerun. Both Neverwinter and Baldur's Gate are cities in that setting. Planescape is kind of like being on alien planets. Oh, you wrote a piece. Uh, you note a piece of the cipher and send it along to Lieutenant Keel. Read the message. Follow the edge of the cliff and hold your breath. The base must be near a cliff somewhere, and also some reason to hold our breath, like a waterfall maybe. But I don't think Liz has figured that out just yet. So what about Baldur's Because I wasn't sure with Baldur's Gate, right? Because I'm playing God of War at the moment. Well, I say that. I haven't played it for weeks, right? But in God of War, um, I am at the point where... Uh, say goodbye. Well, what do I want? I don't, I don't really want to spoil the game or anything. Um, but anyway, I've met Baldur. I've met a character called Baldur. And I was like, oh, Baldur is like a Norse mythology thing, is it? Then blah, blah, blah. And, you know, like... I think Baldur is like one of Thor's children or something. So so then there's Baldur's Gate, but that's D&D, but so what are they doing with the word Baldur there? Is there any specific Norse connection to that one or is that they're just picking cool words? Hey Lonya, oh thank you very much for that, for the 10 euros. Good to see you back. Thank you very very much. I really appreciate that. 
Baldur was the fairiest of the gods? Oh, fairest. Sorry, fairiest. <laughs> he was a very camp god. There's no Norse connection in, in, in the game, Baldur's Gate? Okay. Hmm. Well, there's a lot of players congregating around the lighthouse here, so let's have a look. And I can see some yellow text behind there. There you go. And the word clue. Oh, this is good too. This this will be an event, and this will progress us a bit. This is cool. I like the thought that now forever in Guild Wars, there'll be like random Aether Blades around in these maps that will just pop up. You know, I think that's a, a fun trick of the dynamic event system that they really missed when they first designed Living World Season 1 to only be temporary. Because it was always true that these things could have just sort of expanded on the maps and stayed there but been rare occurrences perhaps you know it's similar to how after season one ended some of those um nightmare tower like pollen pod things are still around and you look at those and i, I kind of think of those as maybe they're, they're an, an oversight they accidentally remained in the game but it works to leave them in and, and that's true of all this other stuff you know a piece of the cipher and send along to q it's a scars scars we all have our scars thorns as prickly as they come. Interesting. A little hint to uh, Scarlet, maybe? Scars must be some sea shanty. Of course, this is the release as well where the trailer was the big song, wasn't it? The Bash, the Dragon, Bash. Which actually had like really, really cool big production values that I don't think are reflected in the actual gameplay at all, but. There you have it. Okay, let's go across the waters. Nice to see the pirates are able to do uh, sword off hand and absolutely nuke us. Whenever I get hit by that, I always think of Guild Wars 1 and how like that sort of thing was not supposed to happen anymore. In Guild Wars 1, monsters used player skills. So when player skills got balanced stronger, it threw monsters out of whack. And they said that they weren't going to do that for Guild Wars 2. And then there they have it with the, the pirates, the exact... That 5 torment bomb never used to be there. But now because of player power creep, it's there on enemies too. I actually like the concept for what it's worth, and I would advocate it everywhere, but it's just sort of a weird thing in Guild Wars 2 at this point. Oh, I'm loving all these uh, random fishing spots I'm seeing here as well. Maybe I could do a fishing series, but I, I don't I don't know whether it would be a good idea. I did hear that there was a little fishing quality of life update. You can now pop the fishing panel directly from the, skill, the fishing skill bar, which I suppose is a thing. I'm going to just generally follow the players here. There's still the Mordrum and Awakened Invasions too, yeah? Well, yeah, that, that, that they are, there are those. That's very true. But that's a different era of the game, isn't it? That's that's now once we're into Heart of Thorns and beyond and Path of Fire. And I think people had started to figure things out at that point. This music is Eye of the North music, for what it's worth. Can never listen to this without thinking of being Guild Wars 1 Tarnished Coast or the Northern Shiver Peaks, the Far Shiver Peaks as well. I don't know, does ever, anyone else have that association every time with this song? This to me, this is running around in the field that is Guild Wars 1 Rat Assume. Maybe I'm about to go cash in a Polymock quest or something. Oh, here you go. Hide up, Clue. Fishing would be great for getting involved with chat. Yeah, one of the last videos I did um, was... I had this idea of just playing the game and doing Q&A. But I felt really awful after that video. I felt like it was a really bad video and I just felt really, really crushed and weird about it. So, I, I don't know. I'm a little bit scared about that when it comes to a fishing thing. You know a piece of the cipher? Send it along. Read the message. Fresh produce in Blood Tide, returning to base past sundown. Meet me by the old hydro post for a lift back. Lail. Why would anyone sign their name on something this con confidential? That's a good question. Who the hell is Lail? I don't know. I'm out of my depth on that. What's that mystery? <clears throat> okay, two broken lockpicks. Very handy, thank you. Ah, oh, that daze had me thinking another powerful creature had spawned and it might have been an event, but then it turns out to just be an annoying raptor. 
Okay, two more clues, and we're halfway done. So we do want to find more Aether Blades. Hopefully we get one that spawns in each section. I'm not going to go to that waypoint, because that's in the cave, the Lost Wreck Cave, and it might not actually be a good choice for us. We could go to Bogside Camp, though. Oh, there you go. Balder, B-A-L-D-R, without a U in it. Old Germanic God. He is a god in D&D, just the same borrowed, you could say. Okay, I see. I didn't realise that about D&D. Is there a lot of, like, just totally, like, shamelessly nicked stuff in there? You know, it's a very derivative of... Because I sort of have that opinion about a lot of, like, progenitor fantasy, let's put it that way. Early fantasy. Um, especially in the gaming space. And I don't just mean video games, obviously. Um, where it feels like they have just chop taken whatever they can from various real world places and it doesn't really matter. And I wonder if that's in large, in, in due part, partly at least, because many audiences were less savvy about real world, um inspirations 40 50 years ago i mean guild wars does it constantly as well guild wars one actually you can immediately feel a lot of stuff from goddamn game of thrones which is interesting uh you know or i don't know whether they've i i've certainly never come across an actual interview where they talk about that um you know a piece of the cipher and send it along to lieutenant kill I-N-Q-S-T, Inquest. Inquest parts coming in from the south to travel through Merchantman Strait to avoid suspicion. So, what have we got? We know that if we go to the Merchantman Strait, near a cliff, hold our breath. Something's blending in. That's pretty good directions already. D&D, right from the word go, pulls massively, massively from Tolkien. Well, yeah, yeah. That's sort of the route to all contemporary fantasy, isn't it? Go back a couple of rungs down the ladder, you're probably at D&D &D and you go back, you're at Tolkien. Like they call him the father of uh, modern fantasy for that reason. Okay, now we've got to be careful because that nutrient is actually to do with the Triple Trouble Worm. Which, yes, we're in Season 1 at the moment, and yes, we're at Blood Tide, but actually, believe it or not, we're way earlier than Triple Trouble right now. It was a whole other era of the game. Triple Trouble is the second... What is this? Everybody's just stacking here to kill the hero challenge? This reminds me of doing Triple Trouble. Okay, here's a little story for you all about Triple Trouble, okay? Doing progression Triple Trouble. <clears throat> for all those hours when it first came out. You know, there's this stupid plaque here because, like, EU technically got world first or whatever, which just totally discredits all the effort and all the hours and all the fun that everyone else had doing the goddamn thing. But anyway, doing progression and, like, fighting for that first clear of Triple Trouble, you would try so hard to have a map that knew what they were doing and, like, you'd give the whole spiel on all these arcane mechanics that people didn't really get and tried to teach people about their builds and their rotations and you had two hours cooldown. The map's locked, chock-a-block, full up. No one can get in for two hours straight. And you'd be like, yeah, 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 this time we can do it. Everyone from the, all 200 people from the previous run are here on the next one. We're going to make it this time, guys. And you'd come down this beach, right, if you were doing the Cobalt Worm. I think this guy's Cobalt. I'm starting to forget. Crimson. Wait. Amber? Cobalt Crimson? Whatever. I think this is the Cobalt Worm on the, on the beach. Anyway, you'd come down here, and if you were doing this, you'd run along. Maybe the whole Zerg would go, and they'd scale it up too much, or everyone would hide, and people would save their blood, their blood last, and they'd wait, or whatever. At some point, people would get to this beach, and you were sure that you had all the people from before. But every time you'd walk next to this thing, it would pop again. Someone new was clearly there who had never even beaten the hero challenge. Because you, once you've done it on that character, you can never do it again. And it was just always this thing. It was like the fourth run, fifth run, sixth run, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth. And just all day, and you'd realize that it was just always... that You would fail to kill the thing, and the map would empty out of a bunch of people who gave up. And then you'd get a bunch of, like, new people that didn't really know what was going on. And they'd come along, and they'd pop the thing. And it was always just this little sign of, like, oh, this run probably won't go any better than the previous run. Because all we've done is cycle the people, you know. All we've done is train a couple of people who never managed to get the kill. 
and now they're gone for good and now we've replaced it with a few other people you know progression content in the open world just it's just such a terrible idea but let's not go on and on about that because end of dragons just dredged all these conversations up again from the past where arena net clearly didn't learn what was going on but yeah with the uh, the funnel meta Uh, talking about world first and pugging, did you? I follow the new 14 ultimate even for a bit. Not even for a bit. Not for the tiniest little bit. I feel incredibly distant from the game because I, I really, I, I've hardly touched anything. I, I've not been around. Um, so, yeah, I, 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 I wouldn't even know what to follow or what that means. I assume it's watching people trying to get the, the kill, but yeah, I, I, I don't know. The only thing I know about, and I kind of like how blind I am with that, and how in the dark I am. The only thing I know about Endwalker at this point still is that spoiler. I know the name of the two trials, or the two first trials. Are there three trials? There's two? That's all I know. Um, where the hell is this last clue? Oh, I'll tell you what, they might have put it right up on the cliff edge with the vista. I sound like Benjamin May, the audiobook narrator. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I don't know Benjamin May. <laughs> I think being an audiobook narrator is quite a cool thing to do for a living, but he has got an incredibly British name. Does he go by Benjamin as well? He doesn't go by Ben, he goes by Benjamin. Benjamin May sounds like like a woodland critter name that you'd give a character in your fairy tale. I'm probably getting, I'm probably thinking of Benjamin Rabbit a little bit here, but <laughs> still. Oh, the new ultimate only has spoilers is for Heavensward. Yeah, weren't they? Yeah, it was like Heavensward themed, wasn't it? I, I remember being excited about that because I wanted to see Thorden and Nidhogg and stuff in the Knights of the Round. Well, this is not where the thing is either. I'm probably focusing a little bit too much on people in chat at the moment now. Which means that I'm not focusing on wherever the hell this clue is. Aha! No, I'm not an idiot. It's just that it's hidden here. But once again, the trail of sky scales has made things abundantly easy to find. Oh, I don't know. Did I talk to you guys about this on a video? I think I might have. But how World of Warcraft's new mounts are just straight up the Guild Wars flying mounts. Have you guys seen that? It's a sad, weird thing about the MMO industry, isn't it? It's been true for so many years now that it's basically like... Um, get to a certain level of success and status and a platform with an existing user base. And then don't spend any money or time or enthusiasm on innovating yourself. Just just nick what other people do that looks good. Uh, and 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 there you go. You can just sort of like... You can be like this big amorphous blob that just takes everything else and continues to crowbar your game to keep it being relevant and and that is success eternal you know a piece of the cipher send along all ships bringing in supplies sails should point northwest second path inside so there's more than one entrance Ooh. okay and we get an event which is good because that's our last clue now And all we have left is to do events. So this is a little bit disappointing. How, what what tip off do I have to know where an event might be? Do that? Are they just always at the clue spots? Should I just sit around wanking off until one appears here, or? <clears throat> Blizzard's always been doing that. Yeah, that's exactly what I mean. I'm not saying that this is the first time with the mounts. I'm saying like that's an industry thing, you know. I suppose there is some skill or professionalism in identifying precisely what you want to take from other products. But I mean, it's this this mount thing is shameless. You guys should see it. It is shameless. I think you need really, really big wide eyes and you need to be really confident to very, very, very much break the mold if, if you don't want to be like full victim to that, so to speak. If you consider Guild Wars and ArenaNet to be victims to that. Which I don't know. I don't know whether that's really fair to say in the first place. Hmm. 
what do we think? There's a sky scale here. Maybe I could just monitor player chat and people might ping. Hey, an event's here. Don't worry, people genuinely put eyes on Guild Wars after that. It was a good press. That's true as well, actually. It does sort of go both ways. That That is true. Because people were talking about Guild Wars for that brief little moment. And it was only positive. If you're the guy being copied, you know you're doing something right. Some people genuinely join this game after seeing the man videos. I mean, I, I do think that obviously that's going to be true when there are thousands and thousands of people in flux every day looking for new MMOs, cycling in and out. Almost anything can happen that will score you some people. Whether it's a significant amount of people, whether those people stay when they get here, whether there's any real with fanaticism and, and so on, I think are all much, much drearier realities to address. You've been enjoying my playthrough videos. It's been refreshing going back. Oh, thank you. Of, of what, though? 14? <laughs> some people are talking about there in chat. Sorry that this has kind of slowed down a lot here, guys, right now. But, I mean, I really am at the mercy of uh, finding Aether Blades to kill. I, I, I would guess I need two more events. Might be a little moment to uh, skip forward on the track bar. <laughs> I'm holding down my hotkey here as well to keep my UI up at all times, just in case it flags something. I should see anyway, even with the UI off, it will do the ding thing and say no event nearby, but you never know. It also kind of helps to be able to see spuds on the minimap, because look, there's like a zerg over here. Maybe there's a zerg here for a reason, because like a lot of aether blades spawn here. Maybe. Truth and knowledge are two different things. Truth and knowledge are two different things. Let's, let's talk about that. You can know, in air quotes, something. Oh my god, I forgot about these events. You can't actually finish these, can you? I don't remember being able to finish these. They just go away too quickly. Yeah. I wonder if they're actually possible. Um, you can know a thing, but it can be actually baseless. But as long as enough people believe in a thing... Doesn't, what, is it, what is that saying? A society can determine a truth or knowledge, but not a truth? I don't know. I don't know what that is. There's something interesting to say there, though. Every MMO has its addicts. Yeah, I mean, look, one thing I'll totally acknowledge is I kind of have this weird mindset with MMOs, which is that you need to make everyone an addict. That's kind of like where I'm at a lot of the time. I'm like, success means making people an addict. You know, I've talked a lot about this, uh, like, world building thing that I'm doing where I'm making, like, a, a guide for my dream MMO and, and all this stuff. And, um, you know, I, I think a lot of people, if they actually ever saw that, they would think, wow, this is, like, really quite oppressive in a lot of ways. Because the entire thing, to me, that that's what the game is. You want to get people into your game, playing your game, talking about your game, and you don't want them putting it down. You, you want to make them an addict. It's not necessarily a healthy thing, really. But my, my view of it, really, uh, as the MMO maker, is, well, that's your role, you know? It's not your role to look out for the mental health of your user base, right? It's your role to generate revenue and create something that affects the world and brings you status and, and conversation. And, and you do that by getting people obsessed with the thing, you know? You know, anyone making any kind of great art shouldn't have to worry themselves you know you're writing a, a brilliant book you're making a film you're doing a tv series you're doing whatever that you're making it so good people will never put it down and that might be somewhat unhealthy or whatever that all oh, people are gonna do your thing more than anyone else's thing no 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 that's that's like what your goal is really right but when it comes to mmos like that conversation of what's unhealthy to encouraging people actually becomes quite real you know like i remember during the 2000s I don't even know if this is true, but it was definitely a thing in pop culture. 
Do you guys remember these stories about people who would die playing World of Warcraft because they just didn't get up? Because they didn't eat or sleep or anything. I mean, I, they, they, those stories are like urban legends to me. They can't, that can't be true. That has to be people with pre-existing conditions. Or something going on. Right, like, I'll, I'll believe that someone might have died in their computer chair. But the idea that it's because they're so addicted to the game, they literally can't do anything else. And then, and then somehow to then put that onto Blizzard or, you know, whatever the game is or whatever it is. You know, it doesn't even have to be an MMO necessarily, just some really addicting game. Oh, any number of PvP games. PvP is what really addicts me, you know, call it League of Legends or whatever. I, I desperately want to say Halo right now, but Infinite did not get me, so... Um, but, you know... I feel like when it comes to MMOs, people would, like, frown at that. Like, oh no, this is too... This is too much grind. It's really satisfying grind, and it's something an adult has elected to spend their time on, right? I mean, surely the owner stops there, right? If an adult is elected to do that, I mean, I don't know, then you got the fact that you might have kids playing your game and blah, blah, blah. I don't know, I'm rambling. Oh, we need more Aether Blades. If they aren't addicted to your thing, they'll be addicted to something else anyhow. Now, that that's dangerous. That logic you can use for a lot of things. And that is dangerous, isn't it? But, I mean, it's hard to argue against. It's how people justify doing all, any number of uh, horrible things. Selling arms to one another and so on, you know. They don't buy them from me, they'll buy them from somewhere else, someone else. It will be slightly less safe, they tell themselves, so that then therefore they have the moral. There have been cases of people dying in Korean internet cafes because they played for two to three days in a row. I mean, an internet cafe. In public. I mean, I just don't believe it. Like, I, I would need to hear more about the exact situation that they were in, you know. First of all, I don't... If I just, like, for example, right? I'm making this video right now. Let's say it finishes. Let's say I literally don't move for two days. I don't think I'd die, first of all. A person in that situation has clearly got something else going on. I mean, uh, what is it? Holding in the toilet? You know, you're not going to the toilet, you're holding it in, and that's created some kind of, like, rupture or something? <laughs> oh, <laughs> we get to the good topics real quick here, don't we, guys? I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, there's an Aether Blade. Same place. This looks like a good spot. Didn't Wasn't the last one we fought here. It would be gross if you don't move for two days. Oh my god, we do actually have to wait to get one more. Oh yeah, I don't deny that. It would be gross, but you know, we're talking in the in the world of mortality. I don't think grossness really matters much anymore, does it? You're not justifying the morality of it. You're just saying you can't hold yourself responsible for others' actions when people have a choice. I mean, yeah, to a certain degree, I'm very much in your court with that. And from the perspective of just trying to make something ludicrously addicting, I don't see anything too bad about that. I think that's a bigger conversation when it comes to mobile games, actually, isn't it? You know, there's a word people love to use to uh, put down games with those ambitions. Predatory. This is predatory. It's preying on my time. And my wallet, which I chose to exhaust. But I mean, it is a real conversation, you know? Gambling, people, uh... People genuinely can't help themselves and need genuine help. And maybe, uh... I mean, gambling's banned in a lot of places. Maybe that's not wrong. How's the season one remake going? Uh, so far, very, very, very much how I remembered it before. Slightly longer. My impression of it right now is basically the same as my impression was when I was playing episode one. Um, I'm really keen to see how much content they get in. I really want to do the dungeon. And by the way, to anyone who's here live, if you want to play it with me, we'll spin up a party and we'll do it just like we did before. I think that'll be really cool. I, I want to see how far it gets because I feel like... Um, I feel like we might be in for a long one here. 
if all this does is the Aether Blade hideout and then ends. I mean, how have they got this set up? It, let's say it ends after the Aether Blade hideout. What about all the Zephyrite stuff? Is that getting cut? What about the pavilion stuff? Is that getting cut? If they cut all of that because that's seasonal or something, maybe the justification is that it's somewhat there anyway. If that all gets cut and we dip straight into the Tower of Nightmares, it's nice to see someone on a skiff, not as uh, a skimmer as I am. Um, then maybe the, I can see it being five because you do Tower of Nightmares as one, and then and then you're already over halfway. That's already three out of five done, and then two around Lion's Arch. But I don't know whether I like that. I think we, we need the Zephyrites, don't we? We need the Zephyrites for Orin's Egg and the start of Season 2. Season 2 starts with the Zephyrites getting shot down. It, it makes very, very poor transition if we don't know who they are before that point. I think I made a mistake growing impatient and leaving that beach. I think I should have stayed on the beach. So I'm going back. We'll go through the, uh, the, the worm fighting arena. It's interesting to think that a lot more people might be doing triple trouble over the next few days because people are here for the Aether Blades and then it will come up. It should totally count because <laughs> it's somewhat Aether Blady with the thumpers. Destroy. It's all Scarlet at the end of the day. Loot boxes aren't, isn't justified in my mind, but a good story. People will sit down and read through a great book just the same. You know, it's funny, I've been reading a lot of book reviews lately of people who are tired of fantasy that is too long. You know, reviews of series like Wheel of Time saying there's too many dud books in the middle, or what's, what's another big one that a lot of people are saying they're tuning out of? It must be really hard to um, stop halfway. There you go, nice. To stop halfway with a thing like that. I'm quite a, um, a sticky kind of person, you know, like, uh, and by that I don't mean a sticky person, I mean, like, like when I love a thing, I'll probably stay with it for a long time, or I really hold it with me, and I'll really, you know, like, I'll be quite loyal to a thing. I don't know whether loyal is a, a good word, but I, I really like to know a thing, and I attach myself to a thing. Um, so I feel like, uh, if I, if I, oh, people were saying it a little bit about Game of Thrones as well. I feel like if I really fell in love with a book series and then it got crap, I'd be the kind of person that just keeps drudging through, wasting my time and being unable to put it down, you know, just keep going and going and going, even if the spark's gone or whatever. But I wonder whether people are getting a bit more savvy than that a lot now and, and just saying, no, do you know what, it's not doing it anymore. Instead of feeling guilty or bad about it, they, they, they move on. Oh, it's good to see you, Rocker. You mean on copium? <laughs> I guess that's a way of phrasing it. I can't believe we have to do another one, by the way. It feels like every time I've done one of these events, that bar has gone up less than it should have. Didn't the first one we do go up by like a quarter? These sections I'm not enjoying just because the telegraphing isn't good. It's the same, it's that itchy feeling I was talking about at Doom Law, you know. Like a loveless marriage. Well, I think it's a little bit different. It's a little bit more severe when it's a marriage. You know, you've entwined your lives. There's like shame behind the divorce, isn't there? There's finances. Divorces are expensive things. And there's fear that you won't find anyone else. You know, you don't have any of that stuff when it comes to quitting a crappy book series. Uh, would your dream MMO have different factions like Horde versus Alliance or EverQuest Good versus Evil? Actually, I don't have that in mind because um, I have quite a strong cooperative thing going on, uh, which kind of gets undermined in the story later. Um, but so I don't have so much of that. I do technically in the story. I do have two factions. The, the story I have is uh, very, very, very similar to Star Trek Voyager, which I think is one of the most brilliant premises for a, like, a piece of fiction I've ever come across. 
So the idea is, uh, Voyage is a very simple idea, it's sci-fi, right? But the idea is that these people, um, they're flung really far away from Earth. They're so far away from home that they, they can't realistically expect to get back before they die of old age. They're, they're really far away. But they're optimists and they go on this journey to try and get home. And as they go, they hope they'll find new technologies and peoples and, and capabilities to maybe get back. And, you know, they're at the heart of Trek, as far as I understand, specifically through the 90s, I haven't seen much of the new Trek, is like there is this thing of... of optimism and, and a beautiful utopian humanity uh, lying ahead of us so you have this great like optimistic thrust of, of these people just on this massive adventure but it's about getting home and I, I find that emotion really really good um, and that's kind of at the heart of what I want to do too so anyway in um, in Voyager they have uh, at the very start this doesn't persist in Voyager but they have this thing where they're two opposing politically opposing factions you have a ship of these people called the marquee um and then you have the the federation ship and uh in voyager these people are forced together um and and you have this kind of interesting mix of these crews in my idea i have something very similar but they don't mix together so you do have the two factions you have the alliance and the horde or whatever and they're all trying to go home but that neither of these groups like each other so you're kind of going in parallel um, but anyway, that's in the story. That's not a player choice to be able to pick one or the other. It would just be way too much to, to sustain two totally different storylines based on the two factions as they travel, you know. They're, they're more about the story, and they, they cross over and stuff, and, um... Yeah, alright, okay, cool. We finally did it. Line Guard Inspector Kill. The Aether Blades? Oh, so are we going straight into the dungeon now? Have been hiding inside a cave in Lion's Arch this entire time. The Scoundrels. I could use some backup for a raid of their hideout. Consider yourself deputized. Head to the base of the waterfall at the diverse ledges as soon as you can, and I'll meet you there. So how are they doing this, though? It's not there anymore, is it? How have they done the entrance? Okay, so it, does anyone on live want to play this with me? I am on... That looks like a this North American a ping time. to me. So I'm playing North America. I'm playing uh, NA. So if you guys are on an NA server and you want to play with me... All you have to do is, if, if you look in the live chat here, I've typed slash join list. Just copy paste that into your in-game chat box. Just type that. Right there, I've got on screen for you. Just press, type that and press enter. And it will send me a party request and, um... And we'll do it. If not, I'll, I'll go alone or maybe I'll look on LFG. Uh, LFG must have some people doing this for sure. Oh, uh, so my ideal MMO is Lost in Space, the MMO. No, no, no. My, my MMO isn't even sci-fi. It's just that general pre premise of traveling home and, and the two factions is what I was driving at there. That was all. I, I have a quest because I think you should have a quest. And uh, one of my central themes is obsession. And it's actually uh, the, 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 the real story is people f leaving the quest and realizing this is pointless. I have a slightly less optimistic take <laughs> But some people will continue on, and that will be to their detriment to a certain degree. But yeah, and with with obsession being the central theme. Okay, so it used to be, I guess, up on the old diving board stuff, but that's not there anymore. So now is it just... It's just in the water, at the base here, in the water. All right, there we go. We've got a player. E. Brink. Welcome, welcome. Oh, and now he's left again. <laughs> he might have been, uh... He might have been EU. Downloading update to join. Well, I'm gonna go in and see if there's like a little staging area. Okay, the play retreat. Let's see. It's a bit strange with season one story getting remade. So the next story after the dragons is on hold. This is interesting to me. Well, that might be the wrong way to look at it because um, it might not be that the uh, the new story is on hold because of this. You might also just say, well, look, they've, they've probably got a lot to figure out for Season 6, how they want to do things going forwards. Like, this is a project that is, like, pretty separate to the actual struggles of continuing to develop Guild Wars 2 and what it should be and how it would work and stuff. So they've probably got a ton of meetings and a ton of stuff to figure out on how they go forwards. And then they've got to make it. And they had End of Dragons coming out all at once. So th I would, I, if I were you, I would look at this as a content drought, air quotes, that we're in. 
this is a period of time where there really wouldn't be much going on, but they've found a brilliant way to do something very meaningful in that space, and they've put season one in during that time. That That is how I would view this year, actually. I would look at this as, this is very similar to after Heart of Thorns came out, and the only thing that was going on was for many months was raid releases. We're in a similar position now, you know, and we were waiting for season three for that long. Okay, so it looks like um, <coughs> you can't join if I've already opened. Uh, this guy says, sorry, yes, I'm EU. Will that not work then? No, it won't. Only North American people can play. Yeah, there's no cross server. Yeah, you, you can't play. You can't teleport to me. I'll, I'll go out into Lion's Arch, I suppose. This is quite interesting, just having an entrance and exit now. And it feels really weird going in there and seeing, like, the entrance of the fractals like that. Yeah, exactly, as uh, Faith says there in chat, the new story's probably in development at any time. Okay, so that guy's in Holbrack. Can you guys come to line? And this guy's in Arborstone. Oh, uh, one of the other patches, by the way, little changes that I haven't talked about, but they added a, a waypoint to Club Canark. <laughs> it's one of the little camp changes that's happened. Okay, so, but I think the people that joined the party here are Euro European players when I'm North America, so. I will wait, like, another minute. If anybody wants to play and you're on North America, come along. If not, I, I think I'm going to go in there, and I'll probably solo this dungeon then. I do think it was on hold. It would be good as they can to play... Whoa, well, what's this? Well, I do think it was on hold. It would be good as they can plan a solid season without getting... Uh, the point of things coming out of nowhere because of them being too rushed or cut content. Yeah, I, I suppose that's fair as well. The only point I was trying to stress is it's not like that. I, I don't have the impression that we are trading one thing for another right now, right? Like, I'm, I, I wouldn't criticize these episodes and say that they have cost us an earlier whatever. Maybe they've cost us a little bit, but I think, I think this is a good value proposition we're in at the moment. Okay, let's just go on in. I've always hated this concept art here, by the way. I really don't like the way that Marjorie looks. Um, my chin looks in there. Glad to have you with us, sir. Inspector Kills organized a fast incursion operation. The two of you will be our point group, and a full cadre of Lion Guard will push in to secure the base behind you. Good, I'm in the mood to settle this quickly. Embrace simplicity. It's an honor to work with you, Commander. In, uh, Inspector Q is just ahead. Those brigands have mined the waters who so swim carefully. All right, well, we should all be pretty familiar with this. Uh, unlike with the other dungeon, this one, um... So there were pretty good, sizable chunks of the other dungeon that are not replayable in Fractals, like the ending sequence, for example, and, and that little bit in the middle. Here, though, pretty much all of it you can tour around and explore in the fractals. You do have to go backwards for a bit, and it is empty. Make it go on. But, um, I don't expect this to be too wildly special new. This is going to feel a lot like the fractals, I think. Of course, I don't know how the combat tuning is going to be. I'm used to taking an insane amount of damage in some of these bits. Oh, I didn't have any quickness for that sound scroll. Ow! It's shocking. Yeah, be careful, Ellen. I wonder if there's any new dialogue actually in these bits. Of course, with lightning flash and with TPs and stuff, we can get through this really quickly. I actually really like the idea of someone who's super familiar with fractals and does it like constantly, just instantly rushing through all of this because it's totally boring to them. Uh, you're still waiting for Super Adventure Box World 3, 1 and 3, 2 now that this is out, the dream is still alive. Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, look, they confirmed that they want to do it. It was the, like the year before End of Dragons, right? So it was... 
It was a weird, unfortunate time, but I really do think it's... Once this is done, is season one... I think we could look at a new sad world next year, even. Possibly. I don't know. The timeline currently kind of works out that they're probably going to be all hands on deck for season six. Plus X back. What's the number? Four. So maybe there's no space for Sab at that point. But then again, when will there ever be space for Sab? If not. I mean, the idea could be that you just, uh, you make Sab the, and the Living World season the same thing. That's, that's what season one did. It won't be in this replay here, but that is basically what it did, so I don't know. I mean, that's actually kind of a good idea, right? If they could do Worlds 3 and 4 at the same time, basically, if they can complete the Super Adventure Box all in one big patch, then they could have that patch be, like, just bog-standard living world. Like, that's episode 2 of, the, of season 6. And in which we meet with Moto, who says, come to the Super Adventure Box and beat it. And it's like, blah, blah, blah. I mean, it would probably be a bit tacky and a bit shoehorned in. But in that way, maybe they could just, instead of it being like a side project, it's just like a full, I, I, I don't know. It's, it's, it's really tricky to talk about any of that stuff when you're just a nobody in the community, right? You don't actually know how things look at the studio or anything like that. All right, they're, they're coming through now. Usually like to get a blind filled up here, but that's fine. So we've made progress for 25 Aether Blades there. How many is it for the whole thing? It's 50. Oh my god, i got a lot of these already. A lot of these are obviously legacy, right? Oh, so what's this here? Complete the fractal after doing the episode. Complete the other fractal after doing the episode. And I'll do the uh, not-so-secret jumping puzzle after completing the episode. That's cool! I like all three of those. Complete the story chapter case closed. Avoid all of his things. Use the Tassie box on 11 people. What? I did that though. Oh, no, I didn't. I accidentally scanned her too early. It doesn't look to me, guys, like there's much more to this release than this dungeon. Have a good time. This is not going to have the Zephyrites and stuff. Well, how are they doing this? What is it? Next time is Zephyrites and Pavilion all at once, maybe? This is a sterile research environment. Leave at once. You remember the footage I did of the beta of 3-1 and well. the gin? You wonder if they keep that or change it. ways of dealing with contaminants. Yeah, um, I don't know. I'm a little bit hazy on the details as I sit here right now. But as far as I remember, there was a separate group that was essentially, you know, the Super Adventure Box was, was Nintendo. They were setting up a Sega Mega Drive, weren't they? There was like another, there was a competing group with a competing box. I can't remember what the story about the girlfriend and the fish was. Wasn't there a thing about it was raining a rat assume and he bought a fish? <laughs> was that it? He bought a fish? Oh, come on, dude. Why are you? What? Yeah, hello. Please stay away from the beam wall. Oh, oh dear. Well, I might have just lost an achievement standing right in the middle of that. But yeah, I don't remember the specifics of the story, but it's something that maybe they could pick back up. I actually uh, was, this year's Super Adventure Box, really interested in the, um, 
in all the glitches and stuff. It all felt very void-like to me. I don't know. Did anyone else have that impression? It felt kind of like voidy and... I don't know, just somewhat reminiscent to these big End of Dragons things. Oh my god, did I make the jump there? I'm very proud of that. The Shadow Box, that was it. Was that what it was called? The Shadow Box? Yeah, I remember that. That was all so interesting and creepy and conspiratorial. Yeah, very well remembered. Oh yeah, and the genie was a joke about game genies, right. Alright, let's watch Fri Let's watch him get... You've won Bopped. nothing! Tremble and cry as I unleash my greatest... The delay on that blowout is so sad. All right, so this is technically new. Ready? This is. I hate those grubby little inquest. See, in this, in the fractals we're leaving right now. Citizen. But we can continue along. I'm shocked and impressed that these ruffians kept this place secret for so long. Let's go. We got it. We've uh, still got ground to cover. You want something? So this area you can come to in the fractals, but what you need to do is go to the boss fractal and backtrack. Playing it with actual content and characters around? Oh, wait, wait, wait. Have I just gone out the wrong door? Yeah, I have. Wait, have I? I think I did go out the wrong door, didn't I? There's a chest over there. I mean, I'll open that. Why not? Or is it through here we need to walk? Okay. Asset recovery. In the story instance, plunder all the Aetherblade chests. Yeah, that was really good about episode one as well. All the hidden chests and things. I, I enjoyed that a lot. And all the additional, like, extra little bits of lore that they filtered around was good too. Well, I'm going to assume that these arrows are trying to point me the right way. Yeah, here we go. Yeah, this is definitely the place. Chest is another one there. This is where we'll walk along the bridges and we'll see a lot, all the really watery, like stormy, frothing tides hitting against the rocks. You want to see the Jobotron accusation part in Vigil Keep? I don't remember that, but I, obviously I do remember the Vigil Keep stuff. That's an interesting part of all of this too to me. Like, how will they do that? I suppose they could treat that just like they Wait, do Old Lion's over? Arch. But at the same time, Old Lion's Arch is still here on our clients. Look at these boats caught in the tide. Look how cool this is. You obviously can't go out there, but I think the visuals are just so cool. Look at that. I mean, yeah, the God Rays are a bit nuts. The boats going up and down. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know how they would do that because it might not be in our clients at all anymore and it, that therefore might be a whole duplicate version of Gendaren to have downloaded for people like multiple gigs for just like a two second thing. That is two seconds even when the patch is new. Let alone five years from now where absolutely no one's going back to it. And yet there it still is. I mean, but then you just wouldn't download it on the fresh and stuff. I don't know. It just seems a little bit weird, that's all. Maybe they don't want to be serving all that data to people. I don't remember this, by the way. These lightning strikes. Pretty cool. Fun little wriggle. Actually, it's not a fun little wriggle. I kind of really don't like those. Because what it means is I don't get to enjoy the environment. Because I have to... S well, I don't have to. But I find myself staring at the... Uh, the ground telegraphs instead. With stuff like that, I, f I, I wish you could like cross and just enjoy yourself as a tourist. But then the something pushes you back and now you've got to navigate here. With the... In fact, this light is crazy. What? This isn't here in Fractals. What is with that light? Is this a direct X issue maybe? Does everyone have this? Anyone in the live chat want to explain? <laughs> But these are definitely the coolest waves and watery areas in Guild Wars. By far. I mean, look at that. Getting rocked around as well with the flag and stuff. It's weird, right? Because I get a little bit of a Final Fantasy moment here. My favourite thing going through Final Fantasy is the dungeons. Because I think they're so cool with the environment art and design. And actually playing a tank in dungeons, I kind of enjoy the gameplay there too. I know a lot of people find it really boring or whatever. 
But I love that about the Final Fantasy Dungeons. And I feel like Guild Wars easily could have been at that level and doing that thing for years and years and years. But we only have these tiny little glimpses of this kind of thing during the Season 1 content and then it's gone. You know? And it's frankly because they never handled it right. Not on the itemization side nor on the actual gameplay side. But the environment bit is every bit as good. In fact, I bet if you paired this dungeon with a Final Fantasy dungeon from 2013. Well, if I had any brains, I could probably remember and do that. What would that be? That would be a Realm Reborn dungeon, wouldn't it? A launch Realm Reborn dungeon? I mean, this looks billions of times better than those did. Wait, is it over? Sunken Sea of Karth or whatever it's called. <laughs> I don't know why that's the first one that comes to my mind. What's that got Grey Flox's long stop? There was a shark in the water. Oh, I didn't see that. Dungeons never should have been optional. Well, like I said, I think uh, I think there's a lot of cool stuff they could do to improve the personal story. And sort of... Uh, set new players up for a uh, the Steam release. I actually haven't monitored that video all month. I don't know if people are still watching it or commenting on it or anything. I'd like to hope that they are. But my little uh, PowerPoint presentation. Sorry, let me just check over here because I get um, I'm guessing there's a chest over here. This is where a merchant is, I think, in the fractals. Maybe. Maybe not, actually. Wow, this place is quite interesting. Wait, am I just going backwards? I might just be going backwards. This one reminds me a bit of the pirate dungeon at the beginning of Stormblood. Oh, what, with the light, with the lighthouse that you're going to, right? That one's awesome, though, and it's haunted and stuff. No, the dungeons are really good. But even by Heaven's Ward, their dungeons visually and stuff are so good. I adore that Stormblood dungeon as well. That there's so much of the adventure on the boat and stuff. Really, really cool. Don't leave me here. I can help. All right. Oh, they see. Is this like classically coded jump pads? No, no, no. I think I think they're like the normal ones. I have to get some Aussies with really high pin to explain whether this is just pure hell for them or not. This is quite cool as well. This is not in the fractals. This is no, no no matter what you're doing, whether you're backtracking or not. Isn't that the Mytrin fight arena? So we meet we meet Eden around the other way, I guess. Yeah, here we are. Today they updated some leveling stuff. If you own the expansions, you get your mastery bar at level 80. If you have mastery points. Oh, you mean literally today's patch? I did read. I, I Here's a funny thing. I got really tired right before making this video. Like, how, how long is the video? Wow, I, I've been playing two hours. Okay, two hours ago, I was really tired. Um... So I like closed my eyes for a second, but right before I did that, I thought, I wonder if the patch notes are already up, and they were. The patch notes were like four, preceded the rest of the release by like 40 minutes. So I bet that first chest was like right back at the start, by the way. Um, so I did read the patch notes for today. I don't remember reading anything about Marshall points. Maybe I was just dumb and I glossed it too quickly before closing my eyes. One thing you don't like about the 14 dungeons is they're just transparently linear hallways. Well, I mean, maybe that's a criticism. Wait, why have I got optional dialogue triggers back here at Scoundrel's Hollow? Oh, maybe that's the very beginning. I love this, by the way. Scoundrel's Hollow, Wretched Walk, Deceit's Climb. I haven't seen this map for ages. In fact, look at that. That goes into the Delessio Seaboard a little bit. That's really cool. Um... Yeah, maybe you can judge them for being linear, but on the other hand, Labyrinthine design doesn't work for a repeatable end game space because players will just learn the route through and they'll just walk through it in that specific way. I remember playing World of Warcraft Classic 
and I and you can see labyrinth and dungeons there. It doesn't match with what the content is intended to be within the MMO. Like it might seem a little bit boring, but not every facet of the game has to cater to every range of experiences, right? Like the dungeon should be the best expression of what it can be, and if that means it calls away from be being like a labyrinth or whatever, then that's just the way it's got to be within the context of an MMO. Single player RPGs, I think things could be a little bit different. But um, and if you want like something labyrinthian, then you can give that to people. You just give it the give it to them in the open world or whatever. You know, you give it somewhere else, and that way the MMO still has the experience. But not every experience can be everywhere. I don't know. Maybe your issue is more with the transparency of Citizen. it. Citizen. But I don't know. I think they're pretty cool with the environments. I never feel like oh. I'm just in a hallway. Oh. Behind this door is my trainer. You ready to face her? Let's finish this. You know, there's usually wide open spaces and vistas and stuff. I think the last dungeon I played was out on these massive open fields. The 5.5 dungeon or whatever. You don't take cannonballs to get out of here alive. I'm dead either way. Might as well strap in for a decent fight. You got it. I'll undock the airships. I'll raise the gangplanks. It's interesting having a bit of different dialogue, right? Or entering the room differently. This is what your curiosity gets. Okay, no, it's not a different dialogue. <laughs> it's definitely not. Wait, hold on. Is that... No, that's not the right one. So the mechanics are all the same. So let's see how much damage she does here. Okay, hold on, hold on. How does this work? Can I break the bar to get her, her earlier? I guess I can. All right, avoiding all of his cannons is a uh, is an achievement. I think I just failed something though. Do I need to dodge to get that off my head? No. What's this thing on my head? I don't like how there's been no there's no marker to track the achievement unless I just failed it too quickly. Bum, bum, bum. I like this, it's like the old mechanic plus... Actually, I can't remember what version of the My Chin fight I'm playing right now. Is this the classic one or the current one? It's the classic one, isn't it? I don't remember these phases being too long anymore. Also seems incredibly easy, and I'm wondering if that's because... Oh, he's in front of the Um, I'm doing this single player, so there's less targets around. He's not firing the electric shot anywhere. Oh, that, that that's one. So, will I lose credit for standing in this? Because I'm only trying to get her to stay in it. I, I, again, I shouldn't have summoned my Earth Elemental. I'm just going to throw her aggro all over the place. Oh, I got hit there. If, if I was working towards an achievement, I think I just failed it for sure. This is the remake version? Oh, well, there you go, then. Does that mean I'll get an extra phase with a bunch of ads in a minute, right? I thought that the old version had, like, a stupidly long, tedious wave attack, bullet hell section. Oh, the uh, airship's leaving. Oh, wasn't I supposed to press a button to shoot that down in time? Have I messed that up as well now? Wait, 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 don't TP to me. TP to me on here. Or just stand in it for a second. I don't think it matters, honestly. It's tuned so low. I do really like the idea of... You see what we're doing here? We're in main story experiencing a fractal, right? I really like the idea of all those other dungeons becoming fractals. So all the new players can play Ascor and Catacombs and then they'll come here and they won't be so intimidated in the Fractals because they do have experience with a lot of it already, you know? I have to TP. Horik's dead now, but she has no shield at all, so... Enough! You've won! Lion Guard. Oh, we got it. our intrepid airship captain into custody. Don't take your eyes off her. On it, Investigator. I'm itching to blow that escaping airship out of the sky. 
Any ideas how to do that? Sorry, I'm rushing here because I thought this was an optional thing you had to do quickly. I feel like I've just messed up the cutscene. <laughs> Maybe not. No, right, that's fine. You just got to get there quick, right? That cutscene was really well rendered there as well, by the way. This is like story going into strikes. Exactly, yeah. Exactly, this is story going into fractals. There you go, unfriendly skies. I think we have to do that at like a quick speed. So. All right, you're in chains, my trin. Citizen. So hold on, are we gonna, is this gonna have an epilogue where we see her g escape to the mists already? Thanks, Commander. I'll sleep a little easier tonight knowing that my trin is in custody. All the lion's arch will. To think the Aether Blades were hiding so close that entire time. She'll face justice. Don't beat yourself up. I won't. I'm headed to Divinity's Reach after I wrap this up to express my thanks to Delacroix and her assistant. I'm sure Magnus will want to celebrate with an ale. You're welcome to join us. Dead in bar? I know the way. So we'd have an echo about forest music here. Same dialogue again there. Do you want to speak? No. Let's check if there's a chest on the ship. I I've still missed one. I and again, I bet it's right near the start. Actually, it wouldn't surprise me if it's under the water, you know. You have to swim down to get it. I think that would be a cool place to put one. Well, here you go. So this is four out of five, and then some mystery. Oh, it's probably in one of those houses, you know, near the start. Chest three, actually. The Aether Visor, a trophy from the investigation and apprehension of the Aether Blade Pirates. Double click to choose a reward. Is this one of those, is this like the Super Adventure Box Visor where if I wear it, it does virtual reality stuff? Will it spawn a bunch of VR pirates saying, Yar, me hearties. Climb up the mizzen mast and all that kind of stuff. Oh, I actually can't go back. Interesting. Anyway, it's a cool dungeon. I think Living World has been missing out from not doing these type experiences. I really do. I don't think they have to call them dungeons if they don't want it to be like repeatable endgame, blah, blah, blah. They could call them expeditions or whatever, but I think it's, it's a really good, fun sort of part of the experience. And again, if you guys go to Wooden Potatoes 2 and you watch my Final Fantasy series, you'll see just how much I love that and how well they do it. I really do think they do it well. Okay, uh, the Dead End Bar. Chest one is in the room before Frizz. That was the only one you found. Oh, uh, I think we, we managed to get that one, luckily. They, they weren't too arcane or too crazy hidden. It's not like you need to go to the wiki to read that one. Those kinds of achievements are where it's always best to play with mates. You know, get into Discord, play with a bunch of friends. <coughs> and you've got not just one pair of eyes, but five pairs of eyes, you know. All controlling their cam get different characters run into different nooks and crannies. Well, look who fell off his velvet couch and landed all the way down here. Let me guess. You came to give me a bonus for that last job. No, I came to thank you. I heard you caught the murderer. Well, you heard wrong. No stool stands for long on a single leg. What are you saying? I'm saying, dear boy, that I had help. Let me introduce you to my associates. Okay, I don't remember this scene. Oh yeah, Krauka chocolate. Wait, 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 Logan, what are you doing, bro? Do I look oh, as good. out of place here as Thackeray does? No, honey. He's a broken toy that tumbled into the ruts. You? You're a flower, blooming despite the ruts. Oh, good. Phew. <laughs> I'm interested to see how how organic their romance seems as well because people are obsessed with their romance and obviously the season ends with a kiss Dare I say that was the first little bit of, of flirting maybe what's this Marjorie's tool belt 20 slot bag A crying scene is only fresh once you'd best have all your gear on you when you arrive There you go. That's from Marjorie. That's my uh, sultry Marjorie voice. I hope you'll enjoy it <laughs> I heard you caught our perpetrator. I can't believe my trim would do such a thing. She was so kind at the crime scene. Humanity can be disappointing. It's an interesting line in the context of a fantasy world with lots of different species around. She won't be harming anyone anymore. 
I'm always impressed by those embrace conflict and overcome challenging odds. I'm afraid I don't have that kind of strength. I'm not like you or Jory. We all work together to solve this case. She won't say it, but I will. You really impressed Marjorie. She talked for almost a whole minute about it. A whole minute. It doesn't sound like much, but it is. Marjorie's not the most open spigot when it comes to praise. You've got to, uh, you've got to, you've got to, you have got to take what you can get. At least my trim won't be harming anyone anymore. I'm always impre uh, impressed by those who embrace conflict and overcome challenging odds. I'm afraid that I don't have that kind of strength. Not like your jury. Okay. So we loop. Okay. You take care, Casimir. <laughs> I quite like those looping things. It's like, um, it's like being t stuck in a conversation with someone you don't really know very well. And you have no anecdotes, so you just keep looping around, you know. You can't get to fresher territory. I'm glad my chin didn't do you in. She's spiky as well as slippery, but we got her. I expected nothing less. Which reminds me, we make a good team. You mind if I call upon you for other cases as they come up? Sure thing. So, what are you up to next? Looking for clients? I'm hearing rumours that the bizarre bizarre may be happening soon. Nothing attracts trouble faster than the spontaneous migratory market. Hey, that's cool. I also like all this alliteration. I, I, I've, I have no memory of these Ephorites being referred to as the Bizarre Bazaar. I hope it happens. See you around. We're gearing up to replace Ashford. His second died a few weeks ago in that whole Molten Alliance uproar. So there will have to be a council election. That's right. This next and I want you to favorite. go for it. What? I don't have that kind of wealth, and I'm not a ship's captain. Then you'd better get creative. I put your name in, and I commandeered the abandoned Aetherblade airship for you. I, uh, I, I... That's the kind of fast thinking that made me choose you. <laughs> yeah, this is all important stuff, and this is good for the beginning of POF. Once again, good work helping take, my, take down my train. Couldn't have done it without you. I don't think this is the last we'll see the Aetherblades, though. So what will happen to her? She's been held in Lion's Arch. Can't say where. Anyone could be listening. But she's in Lion Guard custody now. Find solace in that. They'll interrogate her before the trial. She's safe. Should be. She's persona non grata among those in Lion's Arch and Cryo right now. But we'll bring her to justice. Alive. I want to see her face when she's sentenced to life. Good to know. See you around, Inspector Kiel. And here's Captain Magnus the Bloody Handed. We might have one of the longest names in uh, Guild Wars 2. You've done a human's job, Captain that Snake Trin. Thank you. Happy to help. So, hero to hero. <laughs> I can't do the voice. What do you think of the Inspector? Kiel, I like her. She Gonna played a critical a role one. in the case. Cool, the Commander is so, like, empty of character in these lines. I agree. Kiel has leadership potential. Great dive. Uh, sorry, great drive. Great dive. I'm thinking about the bar. She did good in the South Sun fiasco too, but that's another story. Oh! Oh, I like that. So look, they allude to it. Oh, that's very curious, isn't it? Oh my god, canonically, we play as a commander who never participated at South Sun anymore. She did good in the South Sun fiasco too, but that's another story. Oh yeah, I'd like to hear that sometime. Here you go, this is the thing for the wooden potatoes of the world to whine about ad nauseum for the next 10 years. It's not a complete story, because South Sun's not there. <laughs> New players are getting confused. <laughs> That's, this is it, guys. Who's this Silvari at the bar? Almost clipping into it, but not quite. Actually, so perfectly, so perfectly implemented is that model. Look at that. They look them right up against the bar, but not actually clipping into it. Like down to the pixel when it comes to their knees. They have a really interesting face for a Silvari as well, don't you think? Oh, maybe not. Bartender again. Are you E? Welcome back, my friend. I'll add you to the growing list of the Dead End's returning patrons. It's quite a place you've got here. Oh, what about you, Logan? This is the first appearance of Destiny's Edge, aside from the mail in the previous part. Thanks for your help on this, Commander. I owe you with that criminal in Lion Guard custody. Theo's family will get the justice that they deserve. Happy to help. Oh, my lord. Okay, so... Um, this we had on the last patch as well. They tell you to go to Fractals because... Or was it this specific message? I think it was, yeah. Excelsior Adventure. 
Lion's Arch Cillipods with the tales of the Lion God's brave incursion to the lair of Tyria's latest villainous cadre, the Aether Blade Pirates. And now you can re-experience the decisive raid for yourself. That's right, in the consortium's proprietary Fractals of the Mists, you can relive pivotal moments in Tyria's history within mist-based simulacrum environments. Fight alongside the Lion God's own Inspector, Ki uh, Inspector Kill and become the tip of the spear as you break through the Aether Blade defenses and bring their leader to justice. Fabulous experiences and exciting prizes await in the Fractals of the Mist. Try it today in Lion's Arch. I like this. This sense of it is like a tourism thing, which is obviously always true, but it's easy to forget. Fractals are recreations and not guaranteed to be precisely accurate to historic events. Terms and conditions apply. See attached adventure agreement for details and an updated liability waiver. You receive this message as a party of interest in events that uh, have been identified as appearing in fractal recreations. If you want to unsubscribe, can we actually unsubscribe? Like in the last patch this came up. Can I actually go fill out that form somewhere? Okay, what's this? Another day, another debt. The tragedy at Dragon Bash, Bash has been put to rest and a new mystery calls or will soon, I'm sure. In the lull between cases, I must take a moment to thank you for your valuable service. We wouldn't have discovered my chin's involvement without your help, so thank you. I'll see you later. Marjorie sent that twice. The tragedy in Lion's Archman put to rest and the new mystery calls. We wouldn't have discovered it without you, so thank you. Feel free to stop by the dead end bar anytime. Kiel and Magnus are going to swing by too. I owe you all a drink. Slightly different ending. And then here, this is the first little bit of clunkiness. Lion Guard Inspector Hawley. This. Keel ordered me to inform you of a second Aetherblade lair at Broad Hollow Bluffs in the Gendaran Fields. It's a death trap, but it's filled with treasure. Let's give those pirates a taste of their own medicine plunder and plunder their lair. If we clean them out, they'll think twice before setting up shop again. So that's the jumping puzzle, which I'm not going to do in today's video. But the jumping puzzle is awesome. It's there um, if you guys want to watch it. I'm pretty sure in my jumping puzzle playlist. Actually, I think that was one of the first puzzles I did with Matt. I think I think I have a video with Matt doing that one. That wasn't in the original run with Mike. And I don't think we did any jumping puzzle videos after Christmas. Um, so I don't think that that one would have made the original cut. But yeah, 20 stop bag. I kind of want bigger bags though. Because, I mean, who do I put this on? Maybe one of my mules I can do that with. Okay, so someone in the live chat had a brilliant idea earlier, and that was to preview the Zaitan editions of the Legendaries, which I really do think is a cool idea. So let's do that, but let's do that on a bigger character, you shall we? Delivery. Oh, actually, before I leave this, then, let's just quickly look. Sky Pirates, done. He's in business. Hope you like it. With my chin and custody, maybe we'll figure out who's behind this whole mess. I met with these guys. On my way out, I heard Kiel Magnus discussing a future in LA. He wants her to run for Ashford's spot. First, it was the Molten Alliance. Now, the Aether Blades. We don't know what, who's behind, what's behind this mess or who. But every time we think some things, think things have calmed down, something else wakes up. My Chen mentions someone named Scarlet back at the hideout. Maybe that's our best lead. So we have the name now. We'll get a face on the next incident. I can't believe... This is quite surreal. We're actually... Here we are playing season one and it's filling in. The question is... Is next patch Jubilee? Funhouse? Glint Song with the Zephyrites? Maybe it is. That would be four releases. This was just two releases, this. This was four, but some of them were really small. This is two... Next patch might be four, because it'll be the double release for the Zephyrites and the double release at the Jubilee. That would leave part four as the Tower of Nightmares with the Toxic Alliance. And that would pro possibly be a quadruple release as well. But then part five would be so much. All that information on Scarlet, the Marionette, all that stuff. And then they would have to do all the Lion's Arch, initial attack, second attack, Breachmaker. Part 5 is looking to be huge at this pace. I'm amazed that this is only 5 and not 6. But there you go. Okay, uh, so yeah, let's go to a big character. Just round this out. The other big thing of the patch, just for people who might be interested. Let's do uh, our warrior. Warrior is always... Big Norn is always a good thing to show uh, weapons on. Oh, wait. Make sure to look for E's letter in that instance you're in. Wait, what letter? I missed a letter in the dead end. Okay, hold on real quick. Can I go back? You're surprised they didn't combine South Sun and Dragon's Bash? Well, I'm surprised they cut South Hi Sun. There. I would have thought they'd combine South Sun with um, Flame and Frost. 
But uh, actually, actually no. What didn't I recommend that they do that they do a different order? I can't remember what I recommended. Well, it's not there anymore. What was the letter? What was the E letter? Oh, I feel like I've just missed out on something really good. Hey, if someone in the live chat can put a, a hyperlink. Oh, God. I sounded like a proper old man there, didn't I? Hyperlink. If someone can drop a link to the wiki page of that letter or, or, or somewhere where it's online, I'll read it. Because I've missed it now. Does anyone know? And in the meantime, I'll look at these skins. And then if they're not done by the... If it's not there by then, then... I still love this song on the end. I'll tell you what, End of Dragons soundtrack is one of the best things, unquestionably best things about the expansion. So good. Am I on North America? You're literally at the instance. Yeah, okay then, uh, send me a, uh, a request if that's alright. I don't know whether I can... Um... Uh, oh, I don't even need to go anywhere, do I? I don't know whether I'll be able to interact with things in your instance, but yeah. What what are they called? The Zaitan weapons? Oh well, hold on. Let's let's. Oh my god, all this, all this swapping around. I'm gonna swap back to Liss here just because Liss is standing right there at Devonese Reach. You completely spaced this episode was released today. Well, if I wasn't going through all this stuff um, and I was making the regular videos, uh, hopefully I could have helped with that. Because they did do a blog post. I could have done a little video about it. It wouldn't have been much. But Oh, let me... Okay, wait. Butters is in Divinity's Reach. But hold on. Aren't you on NA? EU? I'm on NA. Oh, my God. I don't think I can join. Because I can't right-click join. We're on different regions. We're on different data centers. So that's not going to work. I don't think anyway. Yeah, so let's look for our Zaitan weapons. Now, it didn't show up in the wardrobe a second ago because I was filtered under armor. What I need to do is be filtered under weapons. Uh, okay, weapons. Zaitan. Okay, here we go. Oh, you're on NA, so I must be on EU. But I have NA ping. <gasps> I have EU ping. Why is my ping so high earlier? I'm on EU. This whole time I've been on EU. I'm so sorry to those people earlier, those North Americans earlier who came to play. I have been on EU the whole time. Oh, rip. Okay, well, there you go. Okay, so, um... Zaitan's Fang. Do we get the flavor text, too? Okay. Zaitan's Fang, the sword. You must have known your history to relive it over and over. Oh, it looks good, doesn't it? Oh, I like it. I love the, like, fleshy, like, blood bits on it. Oh, I do think it looks cool. A bit small, maybe. The swing effect is, uh... Very, very big and, and loud, so, I mean, that's pretty cool. There's something about it, though, that already, I, I don't know, maybe it's just because I have this knowledge, but it already feels not like a legendary, though. Like, it's a set. It feels like a Black line set. I'm not trying to be a complete downer here. And I know that, um, you know, uh, I, I, I can't see its footsteps. Or it's on kill effect, which is a big part of it as well. Right, the on-kill effect, I guess, is going to be a pile of bones or something. Keep an eye out on Reddit. I'm sure someone will get a video up of that real quick. It is interesting, though, that it somehow doesn't feel... Le I love it. I think it looks really cool, but it doesn't feel legendary. Hammer. Zaitan's weight. I wonder when we get to Jormag, is it going to be Jormag's fang and Jormag's weight, or are they going to do unique names for all of them? I mean, that would be really impressive if they can. Oh, my God, it looks good. I can build a world out of the things you're too small to understand. I really like the green, the slight green outline. The shape of this one's cool. The unsheath is just weird. It's like a, I don't, it's very yellow, isn't it? Big yellowy kind of explosion on the unsheath. I guess it's supposed to be sort of reminiscent of bones and plagues and necrotism. 
I really like the green colour on these though. And obviously the fleshiness is brilliant. It would look really good on my flesh abom abomination character. Longbow, we're not going to get to see the projectile here. But we kind of get the vibe of the set. Oh, the short bow is really good. Oh, the long bow should have the short bow shape. I really like the shape. I like the thickness of the short bow. Uh, depending on what these projectiles are like, these could be really cool. I feel like this shape's super overdone. Wow, the dagger looks interesting, but it's probably just the size of... Wow, it's actually a huge dagger. That is a monstrous dagger. I'll tell you what, it's like the same as the sword, it's just he's holding it backwards. That's a huge dagger. Great sword, people are going to be interested in, I think. Definitely looks cool. I like the black, darker shading to it. Oh, the mace is sweet. I wish I could look right down the top. Pistol. Now, this is where it gets weird, designing pistols for this kind of scheme. Not too interested. Same with the rifle. We have uh, <laughs> Zaitan's Reach here, <laughs> which is a um, scepter. From vanilla, I believe. Oh, I've, I've stopped reading the flavor text. Hold on, hold on. Living my... Ooh. Oh my god, I stopped reading so many of them. Uh, think of the terror they all endured and the wounds they tried to survive. Wait, is there a specific order I should read these in? I am the curator of eternity's refuse. The gates have fallen, the walls have crumbled. Is he talking about all there? Living minds are obsessed with decisions they have no power to make. I have purpose for everything you remember. Certainty is better than faith. That's the tail. The mace is called the tail. Which is brilliant as well, considering the tails had like some emphasis on it, hanging in the Dermot Priory and so on. A perfect state in which the worst that could happen is already over. Oh no, the argument. So these names are just inherited from the Aurene ones. Because the pistol is, is the argument as well. So they haven't done a unique one each time. These are, the, it's the same as the Orion ones. I'm sure someone said that in the live chat already. Don't worry, I've, I've caught it now. Um, like all ruins, they become what they are, not what they held. Their vastness has endless potential. Now, see, I like the scepter. I'm wondering if, but, but this is the same general shape as the Orin stuff as well. This flowiness, right, to all of them. I wonder if I'm going to get really uninterested in it because it is ultimately the same kind of flow and like specific like dimensions, right? I do think that's a cool scepter though. It's a very big scepter, which is good. The simplicity of living in ruins is that they are what you make of them. I really like the idea that there's a specific order. A living being's most primal fear, its antithesis, is death. His breath is the torch. We can use anything that remains of you. Don't justify yourself with a purpose. What's all this? This is interesting with this theme of having purpose with Zaitan. His voice. I no longer recognize myself without it. And his scale. I didn't notice at first. Perhaps I wasn't looking. I feel like there's something I can actually, some meaning I can pull out of this. What do you guys think? Like, what if it's like, um... Like, here, what's he, what's he referring to? He didn't notice what at first. Perhaps he wasn't looking. This somehow relates to what Mother said at the end of End of Dragons. Anyway, the shield's pretty cool too, just because it's big, like a bastion kind of thing. Yeah, they all seem to have the standard mesh for each type, exactly. That's a good word for it, I think. Might be wrong. But yeah, uh, I don't know, though. Is this enough for me to click back in and, and play a lot of the game? I, I don't think so at the moment. Not having already not got one of the other Orin ones. 
avoid corruption, him changing. I mean, yeah, that's a good thing to be alluding to. I kind of want to be a bit more tangible about it, though. I love the torch here because the light on the torch reminds me of, like, the ghost lighthouses and stuff. And, you know, it's not fire there. It's necrotic energy, and that is cool. And I love this, like, Stygian veil more kind of thing, you know, this, the Stygian more. The giant vagina monster that is like essentially a raid boss you fight in Guild Wars 1. You know, this is it. This is the vagina. And you know, you, you do all the fighting on the outside. Oh man, I miss learning how to farm that. The voice one sounds sad, like when he became reduced to his nature, he was still aware beneath somewhere. I think that's very on point with what the Elder Dragons are like as well. Yeah. Okay, well, so there you go. So that's uh, that's today's patch. Um, I would like to read this E letter as well and see some of these other little achievements and maybe some other things that I, I, I missed out on. So I'll keep an eye out for the wiki on that. Uh, thank you very much. Anybody who managed to make it to this one live, thank you very much for watching. Uh, to anyone who watches this, you know, you get home from work later today, you see that I've actually put a video up. Thank you very much. Uh, again, uh, like I said at the start, I, I'm, I'm really sorry that there's been so little activity recently. This is not how I want things to be. Um... And all I can say at the moment is that I'm really, really sorry about that fact. And I'm hoping to change it. So, uh, thank you, everybody. Um, I hope you had a, uh, a nice day. I hope you uh, get in there, enjoy the patch yourselves, too. And um, I'll see you next time. Thank you, everybody. Have fun now.